Don't forget the KIDO Talk Radio website. Some great articles on there that we put just put up for you. And a look at Boise State's playoff chances. Many of the experts believe this is the year the Broncos will be the first group of five team to go to the college football playoff. Before that, though, go to our great friend David Ripley from Idaho Chooses Life. David, good morning. Good morning, my brother. How are you? Well, we thought we'd give you uh, the, the audience a brief respite from uh, the endless uh, Kamala clips that we'll be uh, inundated with throughout the day. Yeah, it was, uh, it's very it's very tedious and frustrating to be watching this uh, this Hollywood production. You know, turning her into someone she's not and uh, selling us a bill of goods. So, I appreciate the chance to talk about something real. Well, and the crazy thing is you have people that are buying it, even though when you go to the grocery store, <laughs> the evidence is hitting you right in the face. Yeah, for sure. And um, and the fact of the matter is I don't think it's going to last. So be of good cheer. You know, I, I have a lot more faith in the American people to see through this nonsense. And uh, they're going to vote. They're going to vote in their best interests, I think, at the end of the day, and that certainly is not the Harris Walsh team. No, not not at all. Um, you know, it's interesting. The battle for life continues, and it seems the Democrats are pulling a Karl Rove. And we'll explain this to everybody. In two thousand four, when George W. Bush was running for reelection, he put Rove did. He made sure that the base was fired up by putting on the ballot uh, marriage, defense of marriage, traditional marriage. Worked out well for the president at the time he was reelected. Now we see the Democrats mirroring that strategy by putting abortion on ballots throughout the uh, throughout the United States. And of course, we'll talk about the fight in Idaho. Um, as a political operative, a lobbyist, David Ripley, what do you think of this strategy making abortion the big issue with Harrison Waltz? Well, the fact is, uh, if you look at what they've had to say, the statements from the campaign, it is extraordinarily vague there are many promises about a brighter future but there is a little substance to how we're going to get there and no explanation about why they haven't started work on that over the last four years but the one thing they're crystal clear about is killing babies they are the party 100 percent committed to killing babies and um, even so going so far as to have a Planned Parenthood abortion ban parked at the DNC for free abortions. I don't know what the final death toll was, but I did see an official statement from Planned Parenthood on the first day that they had, they were proudly proclaiming that they had killed 25 babies on the first day through medic, you know, medical, uh, chemical abortion. And, um, I'm old enough to remember the days when the Democratic Party in the form of Hillary and Bill Clinton talked about abortion almost with some shame and regret. So they proclaimed that they were campaigning to make abortion safe, legal, and rare. Those days are long gone, and the only thing the Democratic Party is very clear about this commitment to abortion on demand. I don't think the American people are going to buy that. They're certainly not going to buy that as a substitute for dealing with issues like border security, terrorism, crime, inflation, and on and on. So I think it's a, um, it's a strategy of desperation really. And, um, I also have to say that it is a strategy which reflects a party that is basically embracing evil. And folks don't like talking like that. They don't like spiritualizing these issues, I think. But I, I, I believe that we are involved in a very intense spiritual struggle at the, at the bottom of the barrel here. When you cut through all the propaganda and all the movie making, America is confronted with a real stark choice this fall between blatant evil and life. 
Well, and, and you know, when we take a look at this, they're not even lying as we played this clip yesterday. We got 70 days to act right, y'all. That's right. Now, after 70 days, we can go back there and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, they joke there, but uh, that's essentially what it is. Uh, we'll get back to the national race. Uh, let's get to what's going on in Idaho. Uh, your thoughts on the battle for life in Idaho, sir. By the way, our great friend David Ripley joining us, Idaho Chooses Life. IdahoChoosesLife.org with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. So, David, um, let's talk a little bit about this because all we hear from the media is how, uh, you know, we're going to put abortion on the ballot and this, that, and the other. Um, you've been involved in ballots initiatives before. What do you see happening here, sir? What's going on? Well, the first thing that has to be said is that on Sunday, we're going to mark the second anniversary of the Defense of Life Act. That law has now been in effect for two years. And we have saved approximately 4,000 babies, maybe more. It's difficult to know how many abortions may be happening out of state or how many abortions might be happening with people shipping in illegal drugs into the state of Idaho. But given the historic numbers, I think we're looking at about 4,000 babies that have been saved in the state over the last two years. That's larger than many small towns in the state. That is Idaho's future. That is going to rebound to be a tremendous blessing to the people of Idaho for generations beyond us. You never hear that discussed, by the way, in the on Channel 7 or the Statesman, <clears throat> or even among many of the so-called medical experts or political operatives that talk about Idaho's abortion law, which is, I believe, the best in the nation. They never talk about the fact that lives are being saved, and not just babies, by the way. The lives of those mothers and fathers are being saved also. I don't care what kind of propaganda comes out of the left. Abortion is not a happy experience, and there is a lifelong battle to deal with that history. And Idaho's Defense of Life Act is also protecting women from accumulating and acquiring that history and that regret and that sorrow over a lifetime. So before we get into the plans of the enemy, I just want to celebrate with you and your listeners what Idaho has accomplished and what is happening in this state. And it's something to be grateful to the Lord for and grateful for the political leadership and cultural leadership we have in this state. I think it's amazing, really, just amazing. Well, and a lot of that effort goes to you and the people that work behind the scenes. Our great friend David Ripley joining us, Idaho Chooses Life. Get involved with them today, IdahoChoosesLife.org. Kevin Miller in the morning, KIDO Talk Radio. You know, we uh, you mentioned the media. It's amazing that we can do... Uh, so many stories on the battle for life in Idaho, and yet nobody reaches out to you or any of the other pro-life people to get the other perspective. All we hear about is uh, one perspective. And, and, and look, Channel 7 ran a four-day story on it, and Channel 7 used to be the big dog. They're, they're still okay, although yeah. losing a lot of relevance, and they've gone in a leftist direction, which is unfortunate. Uh, however, uh, I, as I sat there and sped through it because I didn't want to watch the propaganda – I, I was the only one on the radio or anywhere going, where's David Ripley? Where, where's the other side of the story? Why, why don't they, you know, being a, you know, a journalist, the devil's advocate, if you will, why not get both sides of the story, which they, they fail to do? And not only Channel 7, but you have the national media focusing in on Idaho as well, making channel, their, their coverage is so bad, making Channel 7's look objective in comparison. Yeah, you bet. I, I, okay, I never hear from Channel 7, just for the record, or the Statesman. <clears throat> I occasionally get calls, uh, from around the Supreme Court hearing. I got several media calls from national publications like the Atlantic. Um, and I did some of them. But the point, you know, that's always a struggle for me because when those outfits call, what they're looking for is a end quote. Uh, after they've written a story that's 14 pages long and they throw me in at the bottom of the thing um, in order to pretend that they are doing actual, you know, reporting 
and are not biased and are objectifying the issue. So it's really a dilemma to participate in that kind of conversation because it's not a conversation at all. It's designed to, you know, create a, a scam pretense that real information is being shared with their listeners or readers or whomever. Well, and, and it's usually, again, you know, you know, preceded by a snarky <clears throat> comment or something to destroy your credibility. Yeah, and again, this just uh, provides me an opportunity to thank you and to acknowledge you because you are one of the rare persons in the entire state of Idaho uh, that affords me an opportunity to talk about these issues in any substantive way. And I I think that you are a great blessing to the people of Idaho for that. So thank you. Look, I'm just trying to hang with you, brother. I appreciate that. Let's um let's delve into this when we're talking about the state. Um Again, we've got uh, ranked choice voting on the ballot. We've got, you know, education on the ballot. The governor derailed it last year by just paying them off with the money. Uh, we're seeing ballot initiatives pretty much circumvent the will of the people, circumvent the will of the legislature. And, you know, you and I talked about this a couple of years ago. We joked about weed coming on the ballot. That's probably next. They've tried it a few times. However, we're yeah. going to see uh, abortion on the ballot. Your thoughts or an attempt to? Well, we... Well, there's two big topics right there. One is the, uh, we knew, we have expected that Planned Parenthood is going to put DOLA on the ballot. They're going to try to repeal our, our protections for preborn children. They are at work on it. I expect that's going to happen. We're going to have a ballot fight two years from now. And, um, they've got a lot more money than we do. They've got the media, um, uh, and, Yet, I'm optimistic because at the end of the day, the people of Idaho are going to make a decision about what kind of state we're going to live in, what kind of state we're going to give our children. And I believe that Idaho is going to do the right thing. And um, But I do want to comment since you mentioned it. I've, this uh, ballot initiative that we're going to face in a couple of months on open primaries and ranked choice voting is extraordinarily dangerous. And it is a it is a con job that will destroy Idaho if it passes. If we have if we return to open primaries, you're gonna see a situation in which Democrats and Democrat operatives are able to move in and pick the candidates for both parties in contest. Under what scenario does that seem to be a, any kind of a fair democratic process, right? And you may think that I'm engaging in hyperbole, but the fact is I know from what I speak. I was the political director for the Idaho Education Association before I came onto the right side of life. My job was to organize in those days. We did not have a, a closed primary in which you had to be a registered Republican to vote in the Republican primary and to pick Republican candidates for office. In those days, it was an open deal. And I made my living and was very good at it, by the way, at organizing Democrat and independent crossover to Jimmy those primary elections and to end up with a uh, an organization like the Idaho Education Association who is choosing the candidates in both parties for the general election. And that produced a very liberal legislature and a legislature that refused to take up the abortion issue. You know, don't forget in the 90s, we could not get a bill introduced or printed in the legislature that had anything to do with abortion. And that was the direct result of a primary situation in which candidates were being picked by Democrats who could cross over at will under great organizational uh, talent with money 
you know, from unions to be able to motivate their people to go in and vote and pick the most liberal Republican running, often Democrats who are pretending to be Republicans. And that doesn't even get into the bizarre question of ranked choice voting. Well, David, let me, David, David, we're going to hold you on that. Uh, we're going to hold you for one more segment, if you don't mind, sir. Sure. That'd be great. All right. More with our great friend, David Ripley from Idaho Chooses Life, IdahoChoosesLife.org. Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. Mr. Ripley, I know you've heard that many times from Dennis Mansfield and others. <laughs> But we were talking about ranked choice voting and the challenges that we're seeing. And you talked about being on the other side. And now Idahoans face this grave danger. And and once again, you know, thanks to you, Raul Labrador and others, we have closed primaries. But if ranked choice voting comes in, it just, we, we, why even have political parties? It's just going to be crazy. It is crazy. And it's designed, by the way, to empower the minority. It is it is actually designed to flip democracy in a Republican form of government on its head so that somehow a majority vote is dissipated into the cosmos and and a minority of voters will end up deciding even general elections. And my, you know, I, I can't, I can't emphasize enough that my comments about the open primary are not theoretical. That's what I did. And I was very good at it. You have enough money, you can sell a lot of, you know, horse pucky to the uh, universe. And I had access to a lot of money and we killed off a lot of conservatives in that era. And I am very concerned about um, the fact that we have outside national groups coming in to jury rig Idaho politics and culture. And once again, we are faced with the problem that these unions and organizations come in with millions of dollars to manipulate Idaho through the ballot. And there's no organized opposition. We don't conserve, you know, time and time again, we have ballot measures in which there is no organized opposition. There's nobody raising $2 million to fight this thing on the ballot. And yet, if it goes and is allowed to stand, it will change Idaho in a very, very profound way. And within a short order, you will start to see a legislature that becomes a reflection of Montana and Washington and California because of the influence of money and the jury rigging of the electoral process. Right. It will make the Democratic Party relevant. And we Absolutely. Uh, and and, um, and then, David, let's see if we can get you and I in trouble here. Why are some Republicans and they haven't been as vocal as they have been in the past? Maybe they're saving it for October for the the ads that are going to come out. Why have some vocal Republicans said this is necessary because, quote, the Republican Party has gotten too mean? Well, that's that's just, you know, that's just silly. Uh, the fact of the matter is that um, they are not getting their way. These are moderate uh, Republicans, many of whom I think are actually Democrats in philosophy, if not allegiance and uh they are perturbed by the conservative bent of this legislature and the work that's been done on fiscal issues and on cultural issues and um they're looking for a way back into the into the candy store to be able to run you know the the cash register and this is the latest scheme they've come up with uh because they have been ineffective and competing for actual Republican votes in these districts. It's just that simple. You know, the Democrats are the Democrats are the masters of changing the rules until the rules work for them. And that's exactly what is happening here. And I'm just praying that somehow, some way we can organize an, enough uh 
of voters and get enough information out there and raise enough money to educate people about the great con that it's about to go down here. No, I agree with you. I, I do agree with you. So when we take a look at uh, – we'll, we'll see if the Republican Party will get their act together on that one. Um, finally, back to this battle for abortion. They'll have the media. They'll have big money. Re- really, has Planned Parenthood been kicked out of the state? Well, the fact is, uh, for the last couple of years, I haven't really had much dealings with the, with Planned Parenthood at the legislature uh, I kind of pine for the good old days when <laughs> I was up against the actual abortion lobby. Uh, but the intense struggles that I'm dealing with are coming in the form of white coats and, and stethoscopes where you have uh, a substantial chunk in the uh, medical community and the largest hospital system in Idaho incessantly demanding that abortion access be restored as a condition of good medicine. And I believe we are seeing a rise of pro-life and conservative medical providers, doctors, and nurses beginning to push back against that narrative, but it's been relentless. <clears throat> and it's very concerning because um, it's been driven by an ideology which says that abortion is health care. And I think there's been a lot of deception and misinformation out there. I even think a lot of medical providers are remain ignorant about what the Defense of Life Act is and what it allows and how to practice medicine consistent with the Hippocratic Oath. So that's my struggle uh, these days. And... Uh, I anticipate that it's going to be uh, ongoing for the next couple of years. Uh, I think this next session is going to be very intense. Let me uh, let me jump yeah, in. For, let me let me jump in for a second because yeah. I'm going to get uh, religious on you. We know the stance of the Catholic Church, which thankfully continues to advocate for life. What is the stas- status of the LDS Church when it comes to this? Well, the fact is that the legislature, the LDS community is the backbone of the pro-life movement at, at, you know, at the Capitol building. And the church's teachings about the sanctity of life have really, you know, emboldened many, many of of those legislators. And um, they've been a tremendous asset in moving Idaho forward toward protecting life. Yeah. David Ripley, uh, anything else you'd like to share with us? IdahoChoosesLife.org. We always appreciate you. Well, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you and your listeners. And and I, I would ask, I guess, that for those of your listeners that have a relationship with Christ and, and the Lord, I ask them to just remember to give them thanks, you know, in the next few days for what we've achieved here. And... Um, as we mark that second anniversary, it's historic, and we're demonstrating to America that life is better than death, and we have a lot to be grateful for. Well, we're grateful for your friendship, and um, safe travels, old friend. We'll catch you very soon. Yeah, bless you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, our great friend David Ripley, IdahoChoosesLife.org. Kevin Miller in the morning. Don't forget our friends at Beacon Plumbing. They say stop freaking, call Beacon today, whether it's water, whether it's uh, sewage, whether it's just uh, a water heater, which is not just a big deal. Please call our friends at Beacon Plumbing, BeaconPlumbing.net. Yeah, Neo Talk Radio Traffic. Let's get you to work safely and on time. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Kevin. From the G&G Installation Studio Traffic. Now, we're really looking pretty good on the freeway out of Canley County into Ada County. No slowdowns as of yet. Garrity Boulevard looking good. Nampa Caldwell Boulevard, Eagle Road, Chinden, Linder Park, all in good shape. Cut your power bill year-round with G&G Insulation and receive up to 30% off the cost in tax credits for insulation and air sealing materials. Call G&G Insulation or visit gnginsulation.com. That's your traffic now on KIDL. Uh, August 23rd, 15 years. 15 years ago, we 
started broadcasting this program, and uh, there have been so many great memories and so much that we've all learned together, and I just want to thank you for listening to this program. And I can remember, it, and it's always just been this way with this station. I, I really don't know um, why this is the way it has been, but I remember, and now that we have Bo here, it, it operates a lot more smoothly than it did. I can remember the uh, the first time coming on the air, first of all, the, the doors were, I was locked out, so I couldn't get in. And I'm not making this up. The first day of the first program, uh, our friend Lucas Babin was recalling that to me the other day. Do you remember your first day here? And I go, man, I can't remember what I had two days ago. But uh, he recalled that I was locked out and I had to introduce myself. And then I can remember for some reason we couldn't figure out how to go to commercials. And the gentleman who hired me, two people did, Kevin Godwin and Jason Wilmot. So Jason was trying to teach a young man by the name of Matt Steele, who went on to form his own production company, uh, how to run the board. And you're thinking, run the board. You know, it's just a bunch of, you know, buttons you push and, and that sort of thing. And having, you know, been off the air for about eight months or six months or seven months since Pittsburgh, I guess it was eight months, eight months, nine months. Thank you, sweet William, for bringing that up. Um, I'm just sitting there and I'm, I'm used to monologuing, going on and on. And he would just say, keep, keep going. And we literally couldn't go to break because we couldn't figure out how to push the right buttons. And having said that and, and still staying here after that, was, <laughs> who would have thought that we would um, go to Iraq? Who would think that we would um, raise money for the rescue mission and uh, continue to try to earn our way into the lives of our community? And it has been a blessing. And I can remember being a little boy and uh, listening to the great Howie Chiswick, um, who was so good that when I heard Rush Limbaugh for the first time, I thought Rush was ripping off this guy from Kent, Ohio. And just the dominant role that radio has played in our lives. If you're over 40, over 45, you grew up in a different America. You grew up in an America that was not dominated by us, the consumer. You were... We grew up in America that was dominated by uh, big companies that were in charge of distribution. Today, that is no longer the case. Let's go to our friend Pat from Middleton, not from Middleton, the international playboy that has been with us from the very beginning. Good morning, Pat. Good morning. It's, uh, I am so glad. I think I'm your first caller of the day today. So it's... Uh, it's, it's great to have had you on for 15 years, and I hope there's many, many more years to come. Um, I, it's been just you and Rush Limbaugh. I've listened to other talk radio hosts, but you and Rush have earned my loyalty all these years because you, you, you have a way of engaging with people that others just quite couldn't do it because it would go off some, you know, tantrum or something. Or just were became became not not interesting to listen to anymore. And uh, but Rush always held my attention. You've held my attention. There's only been two loves in my life, and it's been you and Rush. So that's in great company. I've listened for for over forty years now to to talk radio, and without it, I think I'd be deaf because I wouldn't want to listen to anything else. Uh, well, I really, I, I, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate you because you're one of the few people in life that actually get my goat, and that is such a gift. And the only time, the, my favorite Pat from Middleton story, except, you know, when I was bald and you were grabbing my head, um, <laughs> is uh, when you and I and Tom Munns were in studio, and actually Tom got under your skid, like you're so famous for getting under my skid. I, that was. That was the, the the best time for me. Not so yeah. good for you, but uh, you know. Yeah, I remember you sitting here in, in your little <laughs> director's chair of, of of talk radio kingdom and just smirking and smiling because it's like, oh, someone's got him. <laughs> yeah, because you were undefeated but, before that, and, and you know, Rush Limbaugh was such a, a dominant force in our lives, and. You know, there, there is only one Rush, only one talent. When, you know, the, the thing about Rush was that you knew uh, everything was going to be all right when you heard, you know, My City Was Gone by the Pretenders. You knew he would get us through. Oh, yeah. It would, 
you know, if I was traveling about with my family or for work or whatever, um, and I'd, I'd be in a different area and I didn't know what radio stations carried Rush, I would just put it on scan and then knowing the time frame in which Rush would be on, right? And I just put it on scan and when I heard that, boom, 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 you know, I knew, oh, stop, there it is, there it is. And and it, it was such a, a, a familiar, it, it was kind of like, the Vin Scully of baseball. If anyone ever had a chance to listen to Vin Scully, you know, broadcast a radio show, radio show of a baseball game, you we used to say you could see the game on the radio, right? And Rush helped us see the optimism through all the garbage that was out there. He he really let us know that. Even though there's garbage out there, there was still hope. There was still, we're a great country, we're great people, we're a great nation. And that there was always hope for a brighter, better day. And this is just a small, small segment of life. And really, in the end run, bottom line, that that person or that politician doesn't really dictate your life. You have control over your life. And Rush. Even though he talked politics, he still made you feel like it'll be okay. Yeah. And you do that same thing. You 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 bring it home and you let everybody know that, you know, there's I know Rush is in heaven or very close to it, but you you make people feel like, you know, there's something more important than than really all this, even though we gotta live through it. And that's important. To give people that hope. And you don't see that. I mean, look, the DNC was sacrificing babies at the altar of their convention. It was an evil. If anybody can't see the evil that took place this last four days, then they have got their head somewhere that no one wants to be. And that is sad. And I'm glad you had David Ripley on this morning to talk about it. Because it was, I, I believe there was over a hundred babies killed right out in front of what the, at the worship altar of the DNC. And but I know by the end of the day, you'll still make people feel that there's a there's a bright future for us. And you do that all the time. And and that's why I'm loyal. You let me on, even though I, I get your goat. You tolerate me. It's a great. You, you have a great, but to, but you have a great talent for that. See, people don't understand it. You and I are, are we walk in similar paths. That's why I love you so much. Even if you uh, love, yeah, I love, I love you like crazy. I do. I, I promote your all the time, just like I'm trying to, you know, I always talk about you wherever I go. In fact, people, you know, I met your, your suit guy. I've met him several times, but never really, he's in a State River Stampede director shirt. And I never thought we we were talking at the call all night rodeo. And I go, I'm Pat from Middleton. He goes, oh, I finally get to put a face to the name. And, and so you've made me popular or famous that way or known. But I, but it's true. You 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 hit on someone's name. You let them speak. You let them talk. You, and you give them the room to hang themselves or to to be a good person. I love Steve, liberal Steve. I know he's gone a little on the wacky side lately. I don't know why he's gone so weird, but maybe this time with death, with the heart surgeries and everything, maybe wake him up a little bit. But there's more things important in life than than the hate he spews so much. But you know, brother, I love you. I I I, I hope you're on. From I'm glad you're staying in Idaho. I'm glad you found an Idaho gal to keep you here, so you're not a wanderer um and uh you know uh, don't go bald again because well no go bald so i can rub that i need some magic genie again you know I, there are a lot of men that look good bald as dave burnett said kevin you do not look good as a bald man well some people <laughs> got put and hair he, on and he was correct yes well some some people got put hair on for reason yeah that's why i got a full head of hair i don't think <laughs> You, I, I think I'd look like Uncle Festus if I was bald. No, I, I, me, I'd look like Egghead from the old Batman. I'd look like Vincent Price. Remember him when he? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> well, we yeah, that... go ahead, Pat. Please go ahead. Well, 
I just I just want you to know that I've always appreciated you. And even though I challenge you, I do it because I love you. I wouldn't waste my time if I didn't love you. If I didn't care about you, uh, if I didn't think you weren't the guy that was bringing talk radio to the community in a way that made you feel Rush-like. You know, Rush did that. He always did. A little different, a little different style, but he made you feel like you were part of a family of a larger audience and you just hadn't met everybody yet. And that's what you do. You, you you make us feel like we're all part of a community. We're all welcome, regardless of our of our differences in opinion and stuff like that. And and you do it so well, and you do it with humility. And that that's hard. That's hard for people to be humble these days. Well, unfortunately, I just have to look in the mirror, and I get all the humility I need. <laughs> well. You've got a wife to keep you straight, and that's a good thing. Uh, I have you to keep me straight. So, Pat, uh, I have to run, but God bless you, and I really appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning. Well, God bless you, and you know I love you, even though I give you a hard time. Uh, It's how you show your affection. I'm the same way. (laughs) Yes. All right, brother. I'll talk to you later. All right. God bless you, Pat. God bless you. All right, our friend Pat from Middleton. Kevin Miller in the morning on your home for Hannity. Don't forget Clay and Buck today. KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning. KIDO Talk Radio. Your morning espresso starts right here. It's the Sean Hannity Morning Minute. He co-sponsored this Medicare for All bill, universal health care bill with Bernie Sanders in the U.S. Senate. And now our campaign says we don't know because she doesn't talk to anybody. And now they say, well, no, no, she doesn't support that anymore. He also called for an elimination of all private health insurance. Wow. We know that she has been bragging about Bidenomics. We know she lied about inflation. And it's only transitory. He was praising Bidenomics up until recently. I played that on TV last night. We played it on this radio show. Her own words and Tim Walz's own words are devastating to them if the American people only, only know about it. And this is now becoming a big problem. The Sean Hannity Show from coast to coast later today. You know, this is getting out of control. Our government is sinking one trillion in debt every 100 days. That's right. A trillion dollars every 100 days. Do you want to bail the government out of debt? I didn't think so. I know I sure don't. This is Linda, and when I worry about the national debt, I turn to safe haven assets like gold and silver. And that's why we partnered with the highest rated gold company, Gold Co. They have earned over 5,000 five-star reviews from tens of thousands of happy customers who diversified their savings with gold and silver. Today, Gold Co. is offering you up to eight years in free IRA fees plus 8% instant match in bonus silver with a qualified account. Call 855-815-GOLD for free IRA fees, bonus silver, free gold, and silver info kit. What are you waiting for? Safeguard your money with physical gold and silver before it's too late. That's what I did. Call 855-815-GOLD, 855-815-GOLD. That's 855-815-GOLD. Kevin Miller in the morning, KIDO Talk Radio. Phone number is 580-5436-580-KIDO. You know, something caught me yesterday, and it's something that we take for granted, and it is the courage of Donald Trump. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, but let's go to Beeve, who joins us now on KIDO Talk Radio. It was so nice to see you at our debate watch party, Beeve. You're looking good. (laughs) Hey, thanks. You know what? I just want to congratulate you on your 15 years. And, I mean, I wish there was 15 more, but I know that that's not reality. But, um I hate it when you go on vacation because I get reruns and I listen. Dedic- I'm dedicated five days a week. And you make my mornings and I look forward to it. And um, I like it that you give us little people a platform to express, you know, what we think. Because, you know, normally the little people don't have much of a voice. It's always the elites and, um, you know, the people with money and and. You know, and and in reality, we are the backbone of this country. You know, you and this community and the people that work hard every day. And I I just I just appreciate you. And um, 
the platform that you give. I agree everything with what um, Pat from Milton said. And, you know, there's people on here that I haven't heard from. Like, um, oh, what's his name? Um, the guy that had the, the men's club, the not, not Pat the plumber or the other one. Anyways, and what happened to the guy from Ontario? I never hear from him anymore. He used to call first thing in the morning. I know. We're looking for Al. And the daddy goes, yeah. shut up and eat your grasshopper. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just this little fun community. And um, I don't call as much as I as I should or do, but I just want you to know that I am loyal also, and I listen every morning. Well, we're, we're all I'm grateful we're, for well, you. We're, and I'm grateful for everybody that calls in and participates and Every every day I learn something new. I you, just get enlightened. You and me both. And, and like I said, Beeve, uh, we're all in this together. And we all grew up with great radio. And we try to bring that every morning. And the people are the part of it. The people make it happen. This is, you know, it, it's like Facebook. You, you put a post up and you see what happens. That's right. Amen to that. Anyways, thank you. You can be a part of there really is good in the world. Well, thank you. We'll try <laughs> to what we're going through right now. We will try to live up to to that. Uh, God bless you, Beef. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Five eight zero five four three six five eight zero K I D O. Coming up next, the courage of Donald Trump. Good morning. Four three six five eight zero K I D O. Coming up next hour, we're going to speak with Nampa Mayor Debbie Kling. Theo Wold will join us as well. A lot of news concerning immigration. Some disturbing news concerning what's going on in Idaho pertaining to what is and what isn't being enforced. If you're a person that follows the social media, well, you know, Mr. Wold is trending worldwide, so we'll get his thoughts on not only that, but really the answer to the DNC. The DNC continues to just go wild and crazy. Um, what it all means, we'll talk about it next. First, uh, you're listening to Kevin Miller in the morning on KIDO Talk Radio, Idaho's talk station. Let's get you to work safely and on time. Good morning, Dave. From the G&G Insulation Studio, traffic now really looking pretty good on the freeway. No major problems to get in the way all the way from Ontario to Twin Falls in pretty good shape there. You do have construction going on that continues at McDermott between Chinden and McMillan. Look for the orange barrels there. With the new multiplier games from the Idaho Lottery, every scratch is a chance to multiply your win from two times up to 20 times. More wins, more woos. That's your traffic now. I'm Dave Burnett on KIDA. Talk Radio. Appreciate it, Dave. Don't forget our friends at Beacon Plumbing. Stop freaking call Beacon. Today in high school sports, by the way, involved has a safe and happy Friday night lights. Of course, we a little tribute to that on our website, KIDOTalkRadio.com. Make sure you get the free KIDO Talk Radio app. Theo Wold joins us now, formerly of the Trump administration and uh, coming to a streaming service everywhere uh, in the civilized world. Mr. Wold, once again, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me on this morning, Kevin. It's good to be with you. You know, I, I have to ask you, um, you know, you're on a lot of shows and you're, and I say this as a compliment. I grew up in the analog world, but there are so many more ways of getting information out, whether it's, you know, Real America's uh, News, uh, Real America's Voice, all these shows that you're on, uh, the Bannon Channel and all these things. Uh, what is it like to, to be able to be a part of that, uh, for lack of a better term, that digital conservative multiverse? Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. If only uh, for, for one reason, which is a lot of the um, corporate monopolistic control of information has been broken. So you're, there are there's a possibility to talk about issues that would have been embargoed before. And there is a way of communicating to audiences who would have only gotten their information from one news channel, one newspaper, uh, one form of reporting, one type of journalist. And so, look, you, you have to do your own lighting. You have to figure out your own hair and makeup. Uh, it doesn't always look great, but it's, it's a great way of getting information directly to people. And in, in many instances, about topics they've never heard of because they've never been reported on. Uh, you're right. Uh, again, you had big companies that had the controls of distribution. Now that is no longer the case. Uh, again, let me ask you whether it's the Daily Wire, the Daily Caller, or others, sir. Are, are they effective? And I know this is a dumb question, but again, I'm an analog guy. Are they effective of getting uh, the information out, sir? 
Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a fair question, uh, Kevin. I mean, I, I think there's really no replacement for the medium that you operate in, which is you know drive time, talk talk radio. I think that's a it's a great conversational format to get people interested and engaged in ideas. There is a limitation for a lot of you know the new conservative media that is very online focused and demographically is only hitting hitting certain segments of the overall population. I, I do think though that. Uh, more and more Americans, especially because of COVID, went looking for alternative sources because their own eyes were telling them, you know, what, what you're saying in this official communique or what the New York Times is printing that Anthony Fauci is saying today is not tracking with the reality I'm, I'm seeing in my own neighborhood or my own city. So people were more interested in investigating these other sources and, and coming up with their, you know, their own uh, sort of formulation of what the news is, is really all about. So I think in, in a one way, it, it will continue to grow. Um, and I think more and more people are aware that look like, I mean, just read the New York Times, you know, uh, from this week, the New York Times headline was Donald Trump lies about the Bureau of Labor Statistics revision of unemployment numbers. Right. I mean, the Bureau of Labor Statistics issued an official revision that we claim credit for 875,000 jobs that actually were never created and don't exist. And immediately the New York Times labeled Donald Trump's attack on that as false news, you know, fake news, disinformation. So I think a lot of people now know the major outlets that people relied on for decades um, are essentially propaganda mouthpieces for the regime. Yeah. And, you know, um, one, one more clip on on this one before we get to, to what you've been covering and everything. I, I'm amazed that something like right side broadcasting is so powerful now considering it came up, as you said, uh, Mr. Wool, during COVID, where uh, people wanted access to President Trump's speeches, so they just found a way, these two guys out of Alabama, and now they have a legitimate media company. Yeah, I mean, there's something you've got to really, uh, you got you have to really admire about the growth of, of conservative media, where quite often it's, you know, WD-40 and duct tape and stick of gum, and, <laughs> you know, people are broadcasting from their garage or uh, you know, a, a, a studio that they've built somewhere in their house and they're figuring it out as they go along. But there's something very American about that. I, I really think it kind of captures a revolutionary war spirit. Like we're going to get the truth out. Maybe the British control the official organs of press. You know, maybe they have all the printing presses in the big cities, but we're going to get the pamphlets out and we're going to get people informed about what's really going on. I think conservative podcasting, you know, the new um, broadcasting channels that have opened up, the new TV shows that are out there that stream online, it's all just another form of, of that early pamphleteering spirit. Get the truth into the hands of the American people and trust them to, to take that information and make wise and, and prudent decisions based on it. It, it, does that surprise you uh, when you go on these shows, the, the reaction you get, sir, from all over the world? Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes. I mean, I, you know, I've been asked to talk about some pretty boring stuff, and then <laughs> you see it, and, and it just blows up. And you're like, wow, that, that's crazy. I thought that was very inside baseball. You know, like, it, it's a pretty narrow policy question. Um, and, you know, other times you, you get connected in, in very interesting ways with people who have – Inside information, you know, I, you know, I lecture quite often about the intelligence uh, apparatus of the country, the intelligence services and the surveillance state. And, you know, I've, I've been connected now with some, some very interesting whistleblowers who have provided some very important information to oversight committees in Congress, all because I chose to do, you know, a podcast or I appeared on, on a, a show and someone saw it. And then, you know, they said, hey, that's someone I can talk to about this thing that I experienced firsthand. So, yeah, it's, it's always a surprise, uh, the reaction. And it's always an interesting time. Like I said, you know, you kind of have to handle your own production quality. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful he, there's a, a, a guy here in, in Idaho who has a really, you know, good setup and a very high production quality studio that has allowed me to sort of shoot from there for a couple of these shows. But you got to handle your own production and sometimes it's hit or, and sometimes it's definitely missed. Uh, would that be our friend, Mr. Baker? Uh, that is, that's actually, uh, Dan McKnight who has okay. got a pretty quality studio set up and, and is doing, uh, you know, he's really invested in, in, in making a space where you can do high quality production and, and really reach uh, a wider audience. And you don't have to apologize for the lighting or the sound quality because he's got it all figured out. No, good for Mr. McKnight. Uh, uh, we appreciate him. We've again heard, we try, you know, we, we travel in similar circles. So I'm, I'm glad that's going on. It's funny that, 
You know, our old friend Mike Baker has created his own podcast empire from his appearances on Joe Rogan and uh, Fox News Channel. So you, Mr. Baker, Mr. McKnight, we, we appreciate you. We want to support you guys. Uh, you're out there. And really, it's it's a different world because you're hitting people. But and then you walk around in Idaho and people really don't know what you've been uncovering. And thankfully, that's why we have you here, sir. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, I mean, as I said, there's no replacement for for the audience that you know people like you have cultivated, and and really the the trust and confidence people have in someone like you that you're going to bring them uh, the topics that need to be discussed, and you know from the perspectives that are important to inform their own decision making. So I, I exactly agree. There's some kind of symbiosis there. They're mutually supporting efforts, but really at the end of the day. Uh, it's up to, to, to hosts and, and um, commentators like you who have an audience who can then say, let's talk about this issue. It's, it's worth you, 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 know, you as a voter, you as a citizen considering. Well, no, and we appreciate you, sir. And again, I know you have other things to do, but it's nothing more important than getting the word out. You show that through your commitment. So uh, we're going to open it up to, to you. We can talk about what you've learned via your exchanges on Twitter, which is blowing up, or obviously we'll then switch to the DNC. But for people that aren't familiar with you on Twitter, um, X, it is continuing to grow. Uh, thank you, Elon Musk. But you've uncovered a lot of things, and you've gotten people reacting to some really hard facts that you've put out there. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, I think uh, X is uh, is a it's a powerful platform in that it, you have the ability to disseminate a, a perspective on a given issue, but also to provide, as we like to say in conservative media, the receipts uh, for whatever claim that is. So the issue that kind of blew up yesterday, um, there's an organization in Washington, D.C., the Center for Immigration Studies. Maybe some of your listeners are familiar with them already. They are considered sort of the intellectual hub on the center right on immigration policy and law. They were created decades ago and have essentially been providing oversight, in particular of Democrat presidential administrations, and have been fighting you know, mass amnesties and, and sanctuary city policies. So the Center for Immigration Studies, will one of their main tasks every week is to FOIA information from the Department of Homeland Security. There's a lot of documents that Homeland Security should make available, but they will claim a national security exemption or some kind of waiver so that they don't have to release data. And that data can be everything from gotaways at the southern border, um, you know, the weekly or daily crossing numbers, or about interior enforcement work. And so in this case, the Center for Immigration Studies uh, FOIA'd um, information from Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE. Now, ICE is the sub-agency at DHS that does the work on interior enforcement. They're the ones who go and get folks who have violated the law, either because they entered unlawfully or they committed a crime while here in the United States, and then removes them from the country, deports them, and sends them home. So ICE has a, a program that enables them to receive an alert when a non-citizen is arrested and then fingerprinted by local authorities. And then they'll, ICE will issue what's called a detainer. Uh, and a detainer is a, a particular term in immigration law. Um, it, it basically is just a notice from ICE to a local law enforcement agency. Hey, we now know that you have a criminal alien in your custody. Hold him, hold that individual till we can come and, and collect them. And the, the federal law requirement is 48 hours. Uh, and, and the other part of the law says, while you hold them, local law enforcement agency, we, the federal government, will compensate you for whatever costs that occurs, accrues to your, your local authority in, in keeping them overnight, feeding them, et cetera. So ICE issues the detainer, and then they, they come and collect the illegal alien criminal from the local uh, jail, the local, local county prison facility. They have a report ICE has to issue every quarter and update every month, every month that will list the jurisdictions, the local law enforcement jurisdictions throughout the country that are of two kinds, non-cooperative and limited cooperation. Non-cooperative means that the local law enforcement authority did not give ICE a notification prior to releasing a criminal alien, and they didn't provide adequate time in holding that criminal alien. Limited cooperation means that they called ICE and said, yeah, we're gonna release this guy, but then they didn't give ICE sufficient time to get there and collect the person. 
for the first time in a long time, Idaho now has three jurisdictions that were listed on this report. Uh, one was designated as non-cooperative, and two other county law enforcement authorities were listed as limited cooperation. I tweeted about this uh, yesterday just saying, hey, this is kind of crazy. There's three counties now in Idaho that essentially one is non-cooperative and two are limited cooperation, and it, and it blew up uh, from there here, here in Idaho. Um, and, you know, look, and I, I think the conversation that I was looking to start is we have a lot of anti non you know, no sanctuary policies on the books here in Idaho. Uh, and Idaho, you know, I think consistently tries to cooperate with federal immigration authorities. We're not a sanctuary jurisdiction like California, Oregon or Washington. Uh, but voters need to know, especially, you know, as they're thinking about what other laws we may need on the books here in Idaho or what it may need for the state to cooperate with a potential Trump White House in 2025 on immigration enforcement. Citizens of Idaho need to know what's actually going on on the ground. That was my intention in putting the tweet out there was to say, hey, this may surprise folks, but there are now three counties in Idaho that are not cooperating fully with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency in securing criminal illegal aliens and making sure they can be collected for removal. And we've had those guys on for years. They're very dry, but they're very thorough. And Theo Wool joining us, Kevin Miller in the morning, KIDO Talk Radio. But it's amazing that you now have the leftist media going after the Center for Immigration Studies as a vast right-wing organization that's anti-immigrant. They just give the facts, and the facts are very troubling. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the crazy part is the Center for Immigration Studies, uh, you know, was labeled by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a hate group. Um, you know, which is ironic because the founder of the Center for Immigration Studies, you know, is from an immigrant family. Uh, they are in no way anti-immigrant. They believe in a lawful, secure, and orderly immigration process. And as you said, their main job, you know, they've got retired consular officials from the State Department. They have people who worked at, um, you know, INS, the original Immigration and Naturalization Service, and folks who are retired immigration judges. They're all individuals with a lot of expertise in immigration law and policy. You know, I relied on them pretty heavily in my work in the White House because they were the real experts, guys who have spent 30, 40, 50 years thinking through immigration law and policy. And all they really want to do is ensure that the federal government is complying with its own laws. I mean, you know, Kevin, you hear that all the time, right? Well, politicians will say, well, we have enough laws on the books. We don't need new books. We just need to enforce the immigration laws that we have. Well, the Center for Immigration Studies is sort of a watchdog ensuring that local state law enforcement and, of course, the feds are complying with their own laws and regulations. Uh, indeed. Uh, Mr. Wold, do you have a, a, a time for one more segment? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Hang on, please. More with Theo Wold next. Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. Liam Buck will have the latest information. Theo Wold joining us once again. Mr. Wold, before we get to the, the DNC stuff, um, you did get some reaction on X on Twitter from just relaying what the Center for Immigration Studies had said, reported about these Idaho law enforcement agencies. Yeah, no, that's true. So, I mean, look, here's the thing. So the Center for Immigration Studies obtains this internal government document from ICE. I mean, it's an official government document that was, you know, obtained through this legal process. They published it on their website. Now, uh, one, you know, county law enforcement authority here in Idaho says, well, it's a fake document. It's fake news. It's not real. Um, and uh, they, they cited an anonymous local ICE authority who confirmed that it was a fake document. Look, Kevin, I mean, it, th- think about what that would mean if ICE is responding to a legal FOIA request with a fake, unsubstantiated document. And that's a national news story, right? I mean, like, the, that means the Biden administration is essentially giving fake information to avoid oversight or, or, you know, clarifying what they are or are not doing on enforcement measures. Um, and I don't think that's an, an accusation to simply throw around. I think the sheriff who made that claim really needs to support it, either by citing the source, the local ICE agent who, who said this, or getting substantiation from DHS, either the regional office in Seattle or headquarters in D.C., and saying, look, you, you know, ICE, you responded to a legitimate FOIA request with a fake document, and this is all fake data. Usually, you know, small counties, rural counties will say, look, we just don't have the resources uh, to comply with the detainer request. We can't house them overnight. We don't have big enough jails and we don't have enough money to do it, even if you reimburse us. That's usually the answer. But I think, you know, Kevin, look, the answer to all of this for me was I think citizens in Idaho need to know. They need to know how the, the immigration enforcement agency designates their own law, local law enforcement 
And it's fine to say, oh, we're, you know, we're not, we're not for sanctuary policy. We want to get criminally legal aliens out of here. But what's the reality? Like, you know, that's talk. But what's the reality on the ground? Does the data support your claim? And this report indicates that for three Idaho jurisdictions, the data shows that they're not complying and allowing federal authorities to, to remove criminal aliens from our communities. And this is something everyone in Idaho should care about. Whether you live in those counties or not, look like, you know, they're not a force field around these rural counties or the county up north. They, you know, these illegal aliens don't just stay in that neighborhood. They, they can get in a car, they can get in a bus, and they can drive anywhere in Idaho. So if a criminal illegal alien is being released prior to being obtained by federal authorities for deportation, everyone in Idaho should know and care about that. Well, and, and you, with your video concerning, uh, you know, what's going on 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 Five Mile and Fairview that no one has covered except us. And you again, as we talked about the last time, it's gone worldwide. And yet, instead of trying to prove whether or not it's true, we have people saying, well, it can't be true. It's as if people don't want to be told that, yes, illegals are coming in here, whether it's by the bus loads or the plane loads or anything else. We have people saying, look, they're they're flying in and and, you know, whether it's in Boise or Twin Falls and they're they're set loose. Yeah, I mean, I think so. There's, there's there's sort of two reactions, right? This isn't happening, or as we like to say, the celebration parallax. That's a defining feature of the modern left. It's not happening, but if it is happening, it's a good thing, right? That's been one of the responses, and you know, of course, the other response from a lot of uh, Idaho leftists to me is, well, you know, Theo is a racist, and uh, Theo is only seeing this because he doesn't want people of color in Idaho. I mean, totally false, totally wrong. You know, the worst kinds of lies and, and personal smears. Instead, I think what the real concern is, are we enforcing our laws and are we ensuring that the, the voters and the citizens of the state are given adequate information? You know, there's a local law enforcement officer here in Idaho who says, uh, you know, concerns about illegal alien crime are misguided. And yet there have been any number of, Amer- of Idaho children, you know, including a, a, a Marine who was home, um, you know, on, on, on leave from active duty who was killed by an illegal alien drunk driver here in Idaho. Uh, so there are lots of victims of illegal alien crime. And it, it's just one of those things where it's really damning when officials who are entrusted with enforcing the law will turn and say to their own citizens, don't believe your eyes. Look over here. This report isn't real, or what you're seeing statistically in your own neighborhood isn't happening. And I and I think that's the kind of gaslighting that most Americans are tired of. Uh, we could go on and on, uh, and we'll have you back on this, sir. Uh, your reaction to uh, the vice president's speech last night? Yeah, I mean, look, I I think it's just more meaningless prattle from from uh, from the vice president, um, and and she's really trying to obscure the central truth. You know, in all of her talk and her accusations against President Trump, she's trying to obscure the central truth that we've all kind of lived through. The Obama regime, Obama, Biden, Harris, have been in charge of the country for 12 of the last 16 years. 12 of the last 16 years have been under their management. And what's happened in that time? The nation has been ravaged by race riots. We've had an illegal alien invasion of our southern border. We've had a recession, economic stagflation. We've had endless wars now in Europe. In, in the, the Near East and, and increasingly the likelihood of a conflict in the Pacific. And then we've also had the growth of this all-powerful surveillance state. They say, you know, Tim Walls will get up there and say, what we believe in is mind your own damn business, but not if you don't mask, right? Not when they ask you to report on your neighbors if they're complying with local COVID regulations. Not if you don't use someone's preferred pronouns if you can lose your job. Not if you say, I don't want my child sterilized or, you know, to have their gender changed by their local school, then you could lose custody of your kids. So it's it, the vision that Kamala Harris has for America is really just a continuation of the core values of the, the Obama regime, which is they're going to grow more powerful. The surveillance state is going to get more authority. The, the government is going to have more ability to meddle in your personal affairs. And you know what you need to do as a citizen in this country? Shut up and obey. That's the core vision that, they, that they're providing, and, and that's really was what was at the heart of the DNC for the entire week and, and just sort of amplified in her closing speech. Mr. Wold, anything else that you would like to share with us? And uh, obviously, if people want to follow you on, on X. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I ch- check it out at, at Real Theo Wold on X and then also 
Uh, you know, I'm, I do a lot of work with the Claremont Institute, uh, their center based in Washington, D.C., the Center for American Way of Life. We're doing a lot of interesting work there on the administrative state, on the woke military, on, uh, you know, DEI at, at public and, and private universities. And I think it's, it's a great place to get more information about what's really being done in your name as an American citizen. Because at the end of the day, it's the citizens who are sovereign. It's the citizens who have the real authority in our government and getting more information just empowers you to make better decisions and, and hold people accountable. Mr. Wald, we appreciate you. We appreciate your courage for uh, bringing these issues to light, sir. I, Kevin, I, it's always an honor to be with you and, uh, you know, thankful for everything you're doing to amplify the voice of, of liberty here in the state. So thanks for having me on. Have a great day. Thank you. You too, sir. Our great friend, Theo Wold, joining us. Catch him on Twitter. Kevin Mill in the morning, KIDL Talk Radio. Don't forget our friends at Beacon Plumbing. They say stop freaking at the call Beacon. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Kevin. From the G&G Installation Studio. Traffic down the freeway. Sun coming up. Going to have that bright sunshine on the windshield. Now, a couple of accidents working. Finishing one up in Candy County at Midway and Karcher. And an accident on Cartwright Road right near Bogus Basin. Get paid to bank when you open a new checking account at Horizon Credit Union. Put some extra cash in your pocket. Visit hzcu.org slash get paid to find out how. That's your traffic. Now, I'm Dave Burnett on KIDO Talk Radio. Supporting America. And uh, by the way, do want to let everybody know that today we, for years, you've said, well, if we can make it to August 23rd, it will be year 15. And we made it to August 23rd, year 15. So congratulations. Uh, there's no one uh, that we'd like to talk to more than our great friend, the mayor of Napa, Idaho, Mayor Kling, Debbie Kling, joining us. Mayor, good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Wow, you have had some great discussion this morning. Well, uh, you're just adding to it. You're, uh, you know, uh, how can it get any better? But we bring in you, the, we, we call you the closer. Well, I tell you what, uh, there's a lot to talk about and a lot of concerns that we have regarding our country. So, Kevin, I just want to thank you for being the media that shares the truth. And thank you for that. And raising awareness of the issues that are the real issues that we're dealing with in our nation today. So thank you so much for that. Well, as they say at Chick-fil-A, my pleasure. <laughs> so today, <laughs> that's great. Today, I wanted to just mention our uh, the community survey that we have open. But I tell you what, after listening to, to all that you have on the radar today, um, it, it seems so trivial. Yet it's still important. I have to say, uh, because we need to, we as citizens, uh, well, as government, right, me as the mayor of Nampa, we need to be listening to our citizens. We need to be hearing what they have to say. And so each year we put out a survey and we haven't met our goal yet. Last year we had 2,414 responses and we're only at 1870. So for those that live in Nampa, if you could go to the city of Nampa.us, and uh, click on the link and fill out our survey. We really need to hear what's most important to you and how we're doing. Well, Mayor Kling, you bring up a good point. So many times we, we hear on this program that, you know, people are frustrated. They want to be heard. And now here's an opportunity to, to get that information out, ma'am. It is, but it's really hard to reach the people, mm -hmm. I have to say, because we send out uh, a lot of different communications and our director of communications, you know, Amy Bowman, does a phenomenal job. We really work hard to listen and to hear from our community, but it is hard to reach everybody. And you know how it is in our, there is a, sometimes there's a loud minority and a silent majority. And in our country, I mean, if you just think about getting out to vote, there are so many that are concerned about what's happening in our nation. Um, but they, they're not voting necessarily. And I tell you what, we cannot take what we have in our country for granted. The freedoms that we have in this country, I tell you, we've forgotten the foundation of our nation. We were a nation that was founded on Christian principles, and we had a constitution that was really put together based on a general morality. But we've lost the morality of our nation. And so it's really interesting to think about how we're going to move forward based on where we are today and if we don't wake up and get involved then we may lose the very thing that we have that is very precious we truly are the greatest nation on the earth and we need to stay well we need i was going to say we need to stay there 
Um, and we are today, but we're certainly going down a slope that's very concerning. Well, and we, we need to stop that. And obviously, you know, you don't have a money tree. We don't have a money tree. And we have to do more with less these days. And I know you're working on that in Napa and you're working with other places. But since we have you on, Mayor Kling, uh, the challenges of, of budgets and, uh, you know, people talk about how great the economy is. Well, it's not so great when people are, are paying so much for groceries and that that hits mayor kling too mayor kling doesn't have the money tree in the backyard or maybe you do i <laughs> i don't personally and we don't as a city um we've got a tight budget and we had costs this year in the city that went up i mean we had almost two million dollars of increased costs that we don't get to control um so there is a whole lot hitting not only the cities, but our our individuals. I just had the discussion last evening with my son, who has four children, about the cost of groceries. He said, it is so ridiculous just to feed your family. is so expensive. And um, it, it just, uh, it's concerning. The cost for the city, I tell you what, the wages have got to go up to compensate. I mean, that for us, they've had to because the private sector and other municipalities keep stealing our employees. So then we've, we've got to have employees that dig the ditches, that fix the water pipes when they break, that fix the signals when they go down, that work on our streets. I mean, it's all extremely important. And that's the role of local government is to make sure that the utilities and the service and the safety are there for our people. But it's, it's very difficult to keep up. And the cost of supplies and goods is crazy high. What it costs today to do work on a road or on our pipes is just so expensive. And it's gone up so much in the last five years. It's just, it's hard to comprehend. So the inflation, um, and you were talking, candidly, I, I could not bring myself to listen uh, last night to the, uh, I always say her name wrong, but anyway. Well, we'll just say the like vice president. president. I always get in trouble for calling her Kamala, but uh Kamala, uh, yeah, the vice, we'll just call her the vice president. Yeah, it, you know, it's, that's a tough watch for us. You know what? The rhetoric, and as was just said, and I'll be repeating what you guys just talked about, but when you have the Democratic Party that has been in office, Trump only had four years, and during his four years, our economy was better. Our stock market was, I mean, everything was better. We, we still had challenges because our greatest, well, we, I can't even say our greatest challenge. One incredibly important challenge we're facing is our national debt. And she casting the two tie votes that took us in the direction we have continued to go with our debt is it's not being talked about. And that is really, really important because our national debt is very scary. But then the immigration issue also, our open borders and uh, the crime and the drugs that come with those borders that all the communities across this nation end up facing uh, because of those decisions and the lack of action, um, undoing what Trump, when he was going to build the wall and then what happened, uh, you know, the last four years where nothing's happened and that uh, we've had such an incredible uh, challenge. So it is, uh, it, it, we are not in an easy place. No, but that's where, Mayor Kling, you know, whether it's Napa or Idaho across the country, faith is so important, and you're proud of your faith, and we're all proud of our faith. It's our faith in Christ that gets us through these tough times. Kevin, thank you for sharing that, because, um, you know, there's a scripture that says, if my people will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. And uh, I think we need to do that. Um, because we really, uh, sometimes our God is prosperity. It's our cars, our houses, and all the things that we have and making a lot of money and power and prestige. And I tell you what, I, those are not the things that make a community or a nation. It's character, it's humility, it's hard work. And we have so many amazing people and they're the heroes of our community that get up every day and go to work. They're not the people that you may ever meet. But they're, they have a foundation of faith. They work hard. They raise their children. They help their neighbors. 
that's what this nation was built on, and that's what we need to go back to. And I hope the community of Nampa is exactly that. Mayor Kling, one more time, if you will, please, to let us know how people can uh, really let their voices be heard in, in Nampa, and, and you'd like to, to get their feedback. Well, we have a survey. We've done it every year since I've been in office. And um, if they go to the City of Nampa website, cityofnampa.us, there will be a link to complete the survey. We are really looking for people that live in Nampa to complete the survey. But I think there is a box you can check if you don't live in Nampa. But, um, yeah, we need to hear from people. The last several years since I've been in office, two things have risen to the top, public safety and transportation, streets. So um, those are areas of focus for us. We we do have a responsibility to protect our people. And I will tell you, I am so proud of Nampa PD. We have an amazing culture, incredible people of character that are serving this community um, in our police. And fire is separate, but we have great people there, too. They're in a district now, but uh, within the city of Nampa, and the priorities, public safety has risen to the top, and I'm proud of those that serve. And I wanted just to call out to our military, too, the people that have sacrificed their lives. Um, whether they, and I'm saying sacrifice their lives, that hopefully come, come home, but they're giving a piece of their lives to serving this country. And I just appreciate and admire them so much for their willingness to do so. Well, and, you know, here as the rest of us are going through the day, you have people that have left their jobs, left their families to to fight for our freedom and then you have their employers that you know keep the job open for them so they can come back so it's a sacrifice with the family obviously the soldiers and the employers absolutely and we have those in the city of napa that have gone and served and a number of our public safety employees whether it be fire or police are former military and uh, i tell you what we look forward to having them and and we have them in other divisions too that have we've held their jobs and uh, given them the opportunity to go, but we just so appreciate the sacrifice and the service. And and uh, anyway, there's a lot to do, isn't there, Kevin? Uh, your job is never done, Mayor Kling. You live in the real world. I live in the pretend world, but we love you. <laughs> I think you live in the real world. <laughs> uh, Kevin, thank you for your voice on the on the radio and we appreciate all you do okay one more time thank you ma'am but one more time if people uh you know would like to fill out this survey and really you want the feedback how can they do it we do we want to go to cityofnampa.us it's the city of napa website and click on the link community survey we were going to close it um this weekend but i think we're going to leave it open until we reach that number so uh, we appreciate people taking a few minutes and completing the survey Mayor Kling, take care of yourself. Have a great day. Take care. All right. Our great friend, Mayor Debbie Kling. More coming up next. Kevin Miller. Don't forget, Lars Larson today at 4, KIDO Talk Radio. Kamala, Kamala. Uh, what is it? Uh, come, come, a come, chameleon. Good morning. Yeah. No, I don't love her at all. But I will tell you, if you take C-O-M for communist, hyphen Allah, that's who Kamala is, because I got to tell you, their support of Iran, giving them huge amounts of oil money, being able to import into the U.S. is the reason why we had the attack on Israel. And, I, and then there's just no doubt about it. They wouldn't have had the funding or the ability to do so if it wasn't from them. And people are just going to ignore that. But what I really want to say, wow, refreshing comments from Mayor McLean. What a wonderful woman. Uh, this is the first time I've ever heard her speak. And, no, that, that, uh, that's Mayor Debbie Kling of Nampa. Yeah, that's what I said, Mayor McLean. Uh, McLean? No, that's Mayor Kling of Nampa. Mayor Kling, I'm oh, sorry. Not, not Boise. Not, no, this would be Mayor McLean. Idaho casts mm. nine votes for Bernie no, Sanders no, and no, 16 no. for our next president, Joe Biden. Yeah, you, you can't forget her voice. Oh. Although, to her credit, she did appear on our, our program during the pandemic and when she was running. No, but I, I really appreciate that from Nampa. I'm sorry I got the name wrong. I apologize for that. That, that was uh, a big miss, uh, AJ. 
I'm sorry. You, you can uh, give me, I don't know, 20, 30 demerits, whatever you want to do. Uh, we we live in Caldwell, but we have uh, uh, properties in Nampa that we bought like 13 years ago. And uh, uh, I got to tell you, yeah, I'm going to try to get, fill in on that survey if I'm allowed to because that woman is wonderful. Well, gosh, I hope she's uh, interested in doing national uh uh, positions or something because um, she deserves it. I mean, she's so clear, thoughtful about everything she just said. I was just amazed. Uh, but Kamala's lies, deceptions, and everything last night, I don't know if you got a chance to listen to the garbage, but it was just, it was, I was just reeling with like, oh my God, I can't believe the world has come to this. And of course, the media, they were showing you all of these tearful faces of people just feeling like the, you know, the second coming of Christ had happened. And I, I got to tell you, do you remember back when it was uh, Democrats for Nixon because McGovern was running? Do you remember that at all? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, he was like the first guy that really came out with socialist ideals about what he was going to do with the United States. And back then, the difference between Democrats and Republicans was about a dime. It was nothing. There was, they really, they had very similar thoughts, but Democrats were starting to lean towards taking popularity votes and stuff like that into their possession so that they could actually con control society. And, of course, we saw how LBJ lied, probably involved with the assassination of um, uh, JFK, and so, but all of this stuff is let out now. And we said, "Yep, it was all it was all right." The CIA did was involved in this, and every time we keep coming back and revisiting history, we find that these people have lied over and over again. Kamala last night, uh, ninety five percent of everything that came from her mouth was a lie. An absolute lie. And I feel really sorry for people that think that they can vote Democrat because they, they, they want to vote for Democrat because they feel like she's giving them that little thing that they want. Whether it's transgendered rights or teaching that kind of crap in school. Whatever it is, I, I don't understand why people don't understand that moral honorable behavior is what we're expected to do and god told us this and you know i gotta tell you if they become if they win this election you know they say that 2029 there's going to be some meteor that's coming towards earth and they call and they nicknamed it the wormwood right out of revelations but i i really hope that that's not true but you got to be honest what kamala harris is uh promoting right now in this country is going to destroy it and any person that's a democrat right now you are an ignorant fool you are the useful idiot that's described in marxism great call aj thank you let's get to paulie quickly on kido talk radio with kevin miller hello paulie good morning david good to hear from you what up, I, missed most the, I missed most of the interview with the mayor but um, give me a quick synopsis, please. Topic one. Yeah. Would you? Of what? What she just talked with the mayor, right? Oh, the mayor talked about uh, they have a survey they'd like you to fill out. They're looking for information for people that are concerned about issues of the city, and she gave out the website where you can can do that. Okay. The one thing the one. The thing that I have a problem with is is uh, Tommy Law and her flying the, the uh, people in, the homeless people in from different countries. They don't come in five or six at a time and drop off, you know, a thousand or whatever. They drop them off one at a time. They do it in the cloak of darkness. And you don't know that it's happening until you see these people wandering around in the streets. And I see that because that's part of my job is to drive around during the day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And it's obvious that they are homeless 
and they, they look out of place, if you know what I mean, the way that where they are and what they're doing. I don't I don't seem to think that they're necessarily a threat to my public safety, but it could be that somebody else like a a twelve year old girl that doesn't know what he's doing, the who she's talking with at the time, goes for a little walk and never comes back. And that's happened since this this whole thing has taken place by uh the Dems. And I, I find it to be almost unforgivable but I have to have a, a place in my heart to let to let people know that these are sick and twisted people that are thinking of doing this to this wonderful country. I think I think they're doing it out of spite of the fact that we are the greatest nation in the world and that they want to pull a coup and destroy it. And that's what they're doing. Holly, great call. Friends here. We've got some Republican candidates in, some local Republican candidates. They have a big event coming up and they decided uh, they uh, they wanted to come in and hang out with us. We're very honored to have them. So why don't we, uh, ladies, please introduce yourselves. Got the big three here today. <laughs> uh, this is Dory Healy with District 15. Now, now again, for those of us that uh, don't live in the, the Boise proper, you're going to have to t- explain District 15 and everything else. The hinterlands, uh, sure. they call us, the mountain yes. people. But. So District 15 is the West Boise, some of Meridian. It's from uh, Overland to Chinden and uh, takes over... Well, I don't know how else to explain it. Really, Overland to Chinden. Oh, no, no, that's, that's good. We're, we're yeah. simpletons here, right. so that's, okay. that's good. good. <laughs> Please go ahead, ma'am. Hi, good morning. My name is Annette Tipton, and I'm representing 15 as well. Okay. Cody Galloway, I'm running for LD15 Senate, West Boise, and super excited to represent our Boise Republicans and get out there. Are there Republicans in Boise? And I, don't, I say that with the utmost respect, and I, I say that kind of a... It's very easy for us to say, oh, Boise's lost, but here we have three young ladies that are dedicated to republicanism, to conservatism, to family values that, uh, again, you're, you're, you're fighting in Boise. So what is really it like to be a Republican in Boise? We have 16,000 registered Republicans in our district. And, uh, I mean, that, that speaks for itself. Um, we have that, that's the majority. So yeah, in our in our district alone, it's majority Republicans. I find often when I'm knocking doors, I talk to people and they are Republicans and they don't vote as often as as regularly as maybe they should. And they say, "Oh, we're fine. Idaho's conservative. We're not even worried about getting out and voting." And I say, "Wait a minute. Do you know you're represented by a Democrat in the Senate?" And 14 of the 15 Boise districts are Democrats. And they're like, "Whoa, no way." They are surprised. They think that they live in a conservative area, um, but Boise is is shifting significantly. So we do need all the Republicans to show up and vote. There's enough of them. If they will come and vote for us, we can win in West Boise. Sure. We, we constantly hear, but we're in a red state. <laughs> yeah, but not the city of Boise. As you guys have pointed out, you guys live it every day. Correct. Why, why not just move to somewhere else? Why not move to the good place? Uh, I was born and raised out in you they're know, not driving, rural Idaho. They're yeah, not driving I'm you here out. Now, yeah. yeah, good for you. Yeah. Um, what's been my experience so far is I, I'm new to this. This is the first time I've ever run for political. Well, office. Welcome to the freak show. Oh well, thank you. I've had a really uh, good welcome the last uh, about nine months. Um, what I've, I've heard talked about a lot is holding the red line. Like we have uh, an opportunity in our district in in Boise, Ada County, to pick up a couple of seats and they're they're competitive um it's a really exciting time out in west boise and i'm just excited to be part of it and when we when we take a look though at, at boise politics how is it uh and we talk about your district and all but the overall city why uh why is it a challenge for republicans that are so dominant one of the most dominant political parties in the country uh, why can't we crack the code in boise i know you ladies are trying and, and we wish you luck and we're we're backing you and everything else, but really, what is the challenge of Boise? I'd say in our district, oftentimes. Well, no, no, just the entire city. Oh, okay. Because yeah. remember, we're we're a whole show that does like yeah. the whole state. So sure, I I believe you know it's it's what Cody touched on, and it's that people don't come out and vote. You look at the demographics and our, our voting percentage, and people don't come out and vote. We have the Republicans here, but people do not show up at the polls and vote. And I, I think it's this mentality of we're in a red state, we have it, and they don't they don't show up in votes. And if our Republicans would show up at every 
election and they would vote, we could take it back. Yeah, just that uh, that unifying aspect, and and we have the nonpartisan mayor's race, but it is very partisan when you think about the direction of the city of Boise. So, in particular, if you three ladies uh, are elected, what ty- what significance does that mean for us at the legislature? Well, for for our district alone. Now you're dominating the conversation. Yes. What about Sorry. the newcomer, <laughs> ahead, the young yeah. lady here? Um, what I, again, I'm new to this. This is why I've deferred to, you know, these very um, accomplished women who have, who have I, I'm with you. Seats. We like to put you on the spot. I appreciate that. it. Thank you. For that. It happens to me a lot. <laughs> You're doing I, I can't tell you how many times I've been asked to go first on, on things. But again, for our yeah. district, I know, you know, to the numbers that Cody was talking about, you know, there is only one Republican and she's sitting right here. Mm-hmm. And I think that having an opportunity, again, being victorious in November for both Cody and me, that we have increased numbers for representation in West Boise. And I think that's really important because the challenges of West Boise aren't the same as what you see maybe in downtown or, you know, closer to the foothills. And we want to be able to um, champion legislation that's going to that's going to represent the challenges in West Boise. Now, what so are they, they the, are different. Well, not, what are they then? Let me hit you with that. The things that I've heard at the door that I can tell you, um, a couple of things is cost of living. The cost of living has gone up um, quite a bit. Um, we are surrounded by, we're like across the street from Eagle and from Meridian, right? And their their cost of living has gone up. So I've heard that a lot. It's like just to, to buy a home. It's almost unaffordable at this point for some people, right? And then the other thing I've heard is traffic. <laughs> That's one of the things I, I, um, uh, I can really uh, understand. I, I, I tell people I've lived in big cities, I've been international around the world, and my longest commute is here in Boise, Idaho, which I personally can't believe. So that's something that I hear a lot, too. And then finally, um, I'm a mom. I've got a toddler. Uh, a lot of people talk about education and the challenges that we have there. So there are some things that sure. can be done that should be done. And, again, one of the reasons why I opted to make this run is I do. I do have a three-year-old daughter. She will be entering public school soon, and I want her to have a fantastic education like the one I had growing up here. Yeah. So let's address those. Uh, We talked about traffic and crime and everything else in education. Uh, Tell me about your platform on education. Uh, You know, I pointed at you. That means you. That's why we don't. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We need a strong um, education system. I I think we're doing really well here. Um, Our parents have to have choices. Uh, We have a lot of options out there. You know, we've heard a lot of different platforms come across um, the legislature the last couple of years. I don't know that the necessarily the correct ones come across, but um, there's going to be a right one that's going to come. And when that one comes, I think that we'll be ready to support that. I love to talk about education. I was a elementary school teacher when I graduated from college, and then I owned a private school for several years in career technical education. And there are things that we're doing right in Idaho, but there's so much more we can do. And it starts with looking at each child as an individual. I'm a mother of four and every kid is different. And so the same answer for one kid is not the right answer for another kid. And so we need to be providing lots of options for parents and families. We need to get parents involved. We need to be efficient with our money. We need to be innovative. I'm with you, but uh, again, you three seem very high speed to me. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. (laughs) If elected, what does that mean considering education is the largest, if not the largest thing we spend our money on. So in the state of Idaho, you've got people that are concerned about uh, kids being taught the wrong things, money being wasted. Uh, You guys, if elected, will be deciding what is and what isn't, um, you know, paid for. I think one thing that I bring to the table is I have an education background and I have a business background. And I learned really quickly, like our kids are in school about 165 days a year. And our buildings were paying for all year long. So when I opened my own school, I did the same thing as all the competitors. We worked nine to three. And I quickly realized this doesn't pay the bills when you're only operating your business from nine to three, 165 days a year or whatever. All the schools are a little bit different. So we had to start making, taking advantage of those building and maintenance costs. And I started doing a learning lab that was from seven to nine. And then I started offering evening classes. And I'm not saying that we do evening classes for our students in any way, but we have to be more innovative in our thinking. We can't run schools nine months out of the year, 165 days of the year, and have all of the costs, the facilities costs around them, 
and then say that we're being fiscally responsible. No business could keep the lights on that way. But oftentimes we have education in one category and they're talking about the great things to do in education and then we have people that are business-minded that know how to do numbers well, and make things work. And, and, and right, and, and just to add to that point, but if you question anything about education in Idaho, you're deemed anti-education. And, and, rega- and I, you know, whether you agree with school choice or not, any, and it's very unique to Republicans in this state that they, you know, have this love affair with education. We all love education. Education is mm-hmm. great, but you should have the right to say, well, are we doing it, as you've said, the most effectively when it comes to funding? Uh, absolutely. There's lots of ways that we can um, work on education. It starts with the funding formula. That's not a really fun topic to talk about, but the bottom line is the money doesn't follow students, and that creates one of the biggest problems in our system. So uh, what would you guys do? And again, we lo- we love this. By the way, before we, we get too much into detail here, you guys came in to, to invite people to an event. That's Who wants right. to talk about the event? That, that's, why, that's why we oh, only that's... have, you know, we only have one person on at a time. It's <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, please go ahead. We are so excited to invite everyone to Kleiner Park this Saturday at 7 p.m. at the Bandshell. It's a free um patriotic concert it's our community neighbors that are singing so no headliners but um your neighbors and friends that are going to sing some of the songs that we love about america and we're going to just celebrate that we love america we love our community and we're happy to be together and grateful to be together in this amazing state and an amazing country and talk about being put on the spot. I'm actually one of the singers, so I'll be up there on Would stage. Would you like to give us a little sample? <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm not a soloist. I always tell people that I'm an ensemble singer. I wish I had a soloist like uh, the pizzazz and the sass of a soloist, but I, well, we're going to be doing a number a cappella. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fair, fair enough. Um, ladies, let, let's get back to this. So give me uh, the number one issue for you that you're, you're talking about uh, when you're going door to door. Yeah, that's pretty easy for me. I get asked a lot about health care and um, access to health care in Idaho and how what we're doing to make a difference. And, um, you know, I always tell people access to health care is not in Idaho. It's not solely in Idaho. It's across the nation. Um, it's not um, Idaho does not have a lack of nurses. Um, the nation has a lack of nurses. Um, we don't have a lack of health care providers. The nation has a lack of health care providers. For me, um, when I've been out the door, I take my daughter with me, right? We go as a family. And um, when I talk to other moms, you know, that have young children as well, uh, things that are concerned about, again, it's how expensive it is to um, get them ready for back to school this year. You know, again, cost, inflation of going up. Um the safety in our communities right for their children whether it is how fast people drive their cars or um, other types of crimes they talk about that a lot and then again education you know they've got concerns about their children's education because of to Cody's point they've got multiple children and they all have a way that they learn and it's not all the same so that's what I've that's what I've heard a lot at the door sure low taxes low Mm -hmm. taxes low taxes Mm -hmm. Put the money back um, in their pocket. I hear it over and over. People are, the inflation's been hard, and the best way that we can fix that is get money back in the pockets of the people that make the decisions for their families. So, always going to be the low tax candidate. Fair, Limited government. Fair enough. If people want to um, get involved, what can they do? Do I, I, call me. Yeah. My number is 208 614 C O D I. That's my name. I'd be happy to visit with you. Do you have a website or anything? Facebook? uh, Anything? CodyForIdaho.com. TiptonForIdaho.com. And DoryForIdaho.com. All right. And one more time, uh, the event at Kleiner Park? Tomorrow night, 7 p.m., Kleiner Park. And there's more information on uh, uh, website and on Facebook, so you can um, get details that way. All right, ladies. Anything else you'd like to share? Kevin, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. No, thank you guys, and um, you know, thank you for being involved, being in the arena, and it can't be easy knocking on doors, taking time away from your family, taking time away from work, uh, just to let you know that you guys are appreciated. Please reach out. We'd love to have you back, and um, whatever we can do for you guys. We'll come back. Thank you. Thank like you. That. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Uh, coming up, we'll talk to uh, David DeHaas, Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. Nice concert in Kleiner Park tomorrow at 7. 
going to be very cool, which is always refreshing. Speaking of cool. Paid for by Living Waters Wellness Center. Oh, there he is. I don't know if we want to call him Mr. Wonderful, but we'll call him our great friend David DeHaas joins us to talk about what's coming up this Sunday at 9 on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Big week this week. Two major events occurred. One was the Democratic National Convention, and that can make your stomach turn. But there was another event that occurred that could also make your stomach turn, and that was the full moon. Did you see it? You know, I, I can't help but see it because, you know, uh, we do the zombie hours. So we're up all the time. We're up all night. We sleep all day. <laughs> well, we know at Living Waters, when the full moon hits, uh, people will start calling because their digestive system is turning, causing them to feel very sick. And so they call us. Did you know, Kevin, that during the full moon, parasites are laying eggs in your body? What? Yep. It's a true story. Not me. I get the I get the fiber, man. Yeah, they can still bypass that. Man, you ever problem. you ever have it when you have the bad fiber and then it did it, 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 then you gotta go go go. I mean, this is your world. It is my world. We know all about these, and these parasites cause real problems. Much like a bad politician stealing your wages via taxation and making you upset, parasites will steal your health, Kevin. And they say, you know, I I heard actually what the parasites they say to each other two words. Joe Biden in that voice. Well, I, I, I've sensed that. I've sensed that. They do scream and shout out, but they do lay eggs. It's a real deal. Yes, sir. And some people may have, may have felt brain fog, nausea, gas bloating, or a pain that feels like something is biting you in the gut, like a bad politician making bad policy. I've even had, Kevin, side note, I've even had people in that have in their brain. So what they talked about, uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. having worms in his brain, that's a real deal. We've seen it. But in the political world, we know the government, if allowed, can suck out your life force just like a parasite. Some experts believe that cancer is caused by parasites. But Kevin, you don't have to worry. I have your back in the back of your listeners because Living in Waters is the parasite removal experts. We can't get rid of bad politicians, but we can get rid of those free-loading parasites. And you'll be discussing that this Sunday? We'll be discussing a little bit of that, and we'll be talking about, we got another edition of uh, another dentist. We've been talking a lot about dentistry lately, and, and yes, parasites can get into those dirty, nasty root canals. We'll be talking about root canals and what the problems they can cause, how to heal a cavity. We're going to be talking about that specifically this week. Uh, yeah, we've got a great show with Dr. Michelle Jorgensen out of Utah, so it's going to be a fun show. Appreciate that. Uh, David DeHaas, you always brighten our day. We appreciate you, brother. I well, appreciate you. If people want to reach out, they're really feeling nasty, like I had a call yesterday. The poor gal, she just can't hardly can't eat. She's throwing up all the time. Call the office at 208-3789-911, or you can go to the website, livingwatercleanse.com. And, of course, we'll talk to you on Sunday at 9 a.m. on the Living Waters Whole Body Detox Show. David DeHaas, take care, brother. Have a blessed week, Kevin. Paid for by Living Waters Wellness Center. Uh, there we have it. Boom. Our great friend David DeHaas. Boy, it's been a, a wild morning so far. Phone numbers here, 580-5436-580-KIDO. Uh, happy anniversary. Folks, we've made it to year 15. And uh, who would have ever thought uh, we've completed our 15th year here in Idaho. And we we're just kind of going over some of the uh, some of the, the best and the worst of Kevin Miller. Number one, I'd have to say uh, one of our, our, our shining moments was when we were deployed, we were embedded with the folks that were deployed with the 116th Combat Cavalry Brigade. It's only taken me 15 years to really pronounce the unit's correct name correctly. Thank you to everyone in the Idaho Guard, uh, the Army Guard, the Air Guard for allowing us to do that. Uh, I do want to thank the folks, I think that was peak broadcasting at the time, the predecessor to Town Square Media that decided to uh, to do this. We We did that. We did our walk across the state. It was um, it was a blessing, and it's so funny because I, I think, and, and maybe you folks over over fifty understand this. There comes a point where, and I think it's fifty, where you realize you ha it's all about your time left, not the time that you have. I, I've kind of convoluted that, but you know what I'm saying. You're not looking forward; you're looking to see how much time you have left. And maybe it was brought forward to us. In the pandemic and the fact that we were here every day during the pandemic, 
was a blessing as well. We've picked up a lot of people from the pandemic. But uh, I, I guess because you're lost in the moment, and, and for most of my professional life, I've always been lost in the moment. And, you know, you appreciate things as you look back. And, again, I think cognitively, they say you develop uh, cognitively after you're 30. But to really understand the significance of, like, when older people look at you, and it's all they know more than you. And I, I, I've reached that point in my life where I, I wish I would have just embraced the moment, but I was so busy doing stuff for Channel 7 at the time, doing stuff for uh, the Idaho Statesman at the time. Yes, we partnered with them when we went because – it was Kevin Miller and you and me, the only show that, that went to Iraq with the troops. And then we did our walk across the state to support Idaho veterans and Bo Bergdahl, who was held captive at the time to raise awareness for him. And, you know, far before we knew the controversy involving, you know, Sergeant Bergdahl, we, again, support people, whether it was, you know, championing the release of uh, Pastor Saeed Abedini. We would have his wife on, Nagma, uh, Nagma on all the time. We see her around Boise. So uh, people come and people go, but the magic of radio, and we'll get to come on and everything else, but, uh, you know, we like to reflect the show as something that we all grew up with. Uh, now, let's see. So we, we now have 15 year olds that have known no other radio personality on KIDO Talk Radio but me. Hopefully we'll get to 20 year olds and 30 year olds. Uh, but for me, I've been doing this for 30, 30 years in February. That's our next goal. But uh, I say that with the utmost humility and to work with our friends Aaron and Joel and, and Rob and Reverend Bill and Gene and so many people, Jason, and, and so many people that have believed in the power of radio. And it was a blessing last hour. If you missed it, that's why we have the podcast. The podcast is not even the, the icing. It is the candles. Uh, truly in my mind that if uh, we wanted to, to make this show podcast only, it would blow up. It would be huge. But we believe in local radio. We believe in having these three young ladies on concerning, uh, you know, fighting. And what a blessing it is to live in a community where you have three young ladies, one with a three-year-old, who they're take, she's taking her daughter with her door-to-door knocking in West Boise. And that means that's Boise, part of Meridian. And you're going into the liberal hotbed. And that we can have people that have the courage to do it. And again, enough of me, back to them. And I followed a few of them uh, on social media. And a lot of people don't know, but you know, I look at people that are, are comers. I look at people that try. And it doesn't matter if you win or lose. It matters that you try. And so many times in life, we look at people on television or on the radio and we go, oh, they're great. No, they're not. I'm certainly not. But those three young women and everybody and even the libs, even the the wackos that say I'm a liberal or question my republicanism or what have you. God bless you. We love you. It's wonderful. However, uh, and even, you know, our friends that we talk to, the attorney general, the congressman, uh, our old friend Tommy Alquist, uh, the governor, you know, we, 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 we are trying to build and continue to build this Republican community, this conservative community. And that's what makes what you do, what you bring every day so important. And as I said, and again, our friend Tea Party Bob, Patriot Ray, uh, Pat from Middleton, Russell and Starr, all of the All-Stars, uh, Lucille, our great friend Lucille, Terrence when he's not uh, collecting gold or Liberal Steve and so many others. You're responsible for this and you are the keeper of the flame. You know, like I said, we all grew up with the great Rush Limbaugh and Rush was the best talent ever. People talk about Howard Stern and all the FM people and now Pat McAfee, everybody, it's a deviation of the Stern formula. You get a yuck yuck crew in and you get a guest and you have compelling interviews. And that's great. They're all really talented. But to carry a program with no calls for three hours and to, and, and to make it that you, you wanted more, that was the brilliance of Rush Limbaugh. And the fact that he worked until literally the day he died, is there a greater gift? And we're under assault from the digital smidgenal stuff. 
you know, like I said, it's great that we have, uh, you know, Theo Wold on, who's on all the big shows, streaming shows. You know, my parents, one of them is uh, in his 80s. The other is closing in on the 80s. And they know more about the digital conservative media than I do. And we can all work together. You know, Glenn Beck is the guy that really set the formula up. Everybody pretty much follows his model of the blaze. Now, again, I get territorial because this is a local community and we have to educate people on it. And that's why we have those three young ladies on and their event at Kleiner Park. Good for them. And we need to encourage people. Whether we agree with them or not, I agree with them and God bless them for that. Phone numbers here, 580-5436. Mike and Boise, please hang on. We're going to give you a ton of time. Don't forget our friends at Beacon Plumbing. They say stop freaking. Call Beacon today. Let's get you to work safely and on time. Dave Burnett. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Kevin. From the G&G Installation Studio, running accident-free, no major problems to get in your way this morning. Buckle up, watch the speeds inbound on the connector. That's your traffic. Now, I'm Dave Burnett on KIBO Talk Radio. Let's go to Mike in Boise, Idaho with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, Mike. I just wanted to call and wish you happy anniversary. I never thought I'd make it, bro. It's been a long time. <sighs> Yeah, well, I wanted, I know that. So I want, I want to make a few comments. And, um, actually, I've been, I've been looking forward to this day. You've been mentioning it to be coming up for a while. So, um, so, so a couple things. Um, I guess what I want, maybe I'll start with this. Um, I did YMCA camp counseling for five summers starting my, in eighth grade while, um, the other kids were out making a lot more money bussing tables, but, the first thing they said was that we had more influence if you add up all the hours, seven by 24 for a full week with those kids than a school teacher does in a year. And what I learned was not just that, but, but you don't know how you touch those lives. So we knew we had that influence. I did. I saw it in little ways. So I did it. One of the reasons I did it for five years, but it couldn't be for the immediate payback. It really was something you do for service because you, you just don't know uh, how you're going to touch those lives and, and um, be an influence even with that short time. And so that's something that you do. Yeah, you have a big audience. You touch lives. And the majority, you get some visibility, but you really don't understand all the differences that you make in other people's lives. And... Um, you know, I came here right before COVID. I tried to get out of Dodge before I shut the border down or some stupid thing. Just what I can put in the car, slept on an air, uh, an air mattress or the portable bed. And somehow I found a home in your show. Um, I've always been into talk radio, Rush and the rest. Helped with the local um, conservative, actually, radio station, independent down in Crazyville. And uh, I, don't, I don't remember how I found you, but I know I was looking. And I do remember you being a fixture, you know, during COVID. And um, it, so that was my first exposure to your show. And, and I also remember you're going to help me with that support local thing. You're always willing to help people. And um, it was through you that I met people like Tea Party Bob, Captain Harry. And, um, and I want to put a shout out to Constitutional Jack. Um, I wouldn't have met those people and others um, through a circuitous way. I, I met Am and Bundy, but it really actually came through, happened through your show. Another story. So, so I'll always, I'll always remember that. And um, and and I think the other thing I want you, you, you spoke about living in the moment. So if there's one thing my shepherd teaches me <laughs> every single day is living in the moment. Because as you know, dogs uh, become our best friend, but they yes. don't last forever. You're right. <laughs> How many country songs talk about that? And I had a shepherd in my 20s, and that was the hardest thing I had to do when he passed. And I, you know, you, you just you never get over it. So it's one of those things where what am I doing <laughs> to myself? And so what I tell people is, you know, um, that day is always kind of on my mind. But what I do is focus on, on the moment, every moment with him. And so I, I think that's, that's what I would say. It seems like you had that, you were talking about that earlier. 
living in the moment. So on the one hand, you have this, you know, hey, still employed, still employed. You have things hanging over your head. But I think things like that can channel into just the living in the moment and and not just, the, you know, big moments, but just small ones. I, I just compare it to my shepherd. Just a little moment is just, you know, seeing that uh, he needs a hug or I need a hug. It doesn't have to be some big, not even a, an increment of a whole day just one little moment. And so I, I think, um, I, I think you're right on with that. You know, you, you enjoy the time that you have in little moments and, uh, not, not, not worry about what's hanging over your head, but let it drive you to positive things. Well, and, and again, our time together becomes more valuable as we, we get older and we appreciate what it's not, you know, we have, you know, maybe decades instead of, you know, 50 or 60 years left. And, and you think about the whole time that you were on the ascent and it was so important and trying to get affirmation and this, that, and the other. And then when you get there, you're going, you know, the most important thing is like these three Republican women we had talking to, you know, you and I talking to each other. That's, you know, those are the things that are going to be with us for the rest of our lives. And touching the other lives that, that yes. yes that you're touching and so you know i'm not a spring chicken so <laughs> I, I, it's it's the last chapter for me that, that i knew that when i when i moved up here it's the last chapter and so that um maybe to my detriment sometimes creates a sense of urgency <laughs> no i, I mean we, I, we no, never, you're right but it's it also though the the idea that you have friends and you know, uh, again, we, we continue to try to move on, but that pandemic, I don't know whoever will be able to define it, but that pandemic and what it did to us, it radically transformed our, our you know, you're a programmer, you work with the computers, it it, it, it reprogrammed us, it reprogrammed our society. Um, I, I don't know if we'll ever understand the impact it had on us. Um, I, I, I tried to. I... I, I it, I, it, it depends. I'm trying to answer your question. I don't know, all, the, all the little things. I, let's just understand it at the thirty thousand foot view, and 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 draw certain lessons. I think you know. The other day, I was commenting on on the monkeypox thing. It was it was uh, okay. We we need to be aware of things. We we know what happened, and we know how it became an opportunity for those that want to control to control. And, um, and, and so I, I, I just, yeah, I, I guess I'm thinking right now in the moment that, that, that how, we use it however we can. So to me, it's just like, okay, we learned something about our leaders and, and I don't want to just all call them all evil and all that. People just, uh, under certain conditions, what's really inside comes out. It, I, I don't, things happen. So rather than good or evil, we we know what they do. We know what happened in the state. So let's keep our eyes open moving forward. Mike and Boise, thank you for the call and thank you for the compliments. We appreciate you listening, brother. Okay, and thanks thanks for all you do, Kevin. Our great friend Mike in Boise. Joining us now, another good one, the thriller, Ron Grant. Paid for by Ron Grant, your safer money specialist. Who joins us now to let us know how to keep our money safe. Easier said than done. Ron, good morning. Hey, good morning, Kevin. Well, it's it's not really that hard. You know, market's up, market's down, market's sideways. But the nice thing about what I do for myself and, and, and my clients is we make sure that we have a guaranteed lifetime income that the Wall Street casino just doesn't provide for, or the 401Ks, or the 403Bs, etc. You know, we want to have a lifetime income, Kevin, that we can take care of our family uh, in retirement. And I provide for my clients a lifetime of security through that lifetime of income that the traditional retirement plans just don't offer. And it's important, Kevin, if you're getting ready to retire in the next couple of years, we get that money in a product that produces a lifetime income for you. Ron, um, how can people get more information and what what is the process like? Process is, uh, is really easy. You know, I ask a lot of questions. I listen a lot to make sure that these products are right for you uh, and make sure that I know when you want the money, how you want the money, uh, that type of situation. I have a great educational website that you can go on 24-7 at safermoneyspecialist.com. Uh, we can also have a phone conversation right here in the Treasure Valley. That's 208 
860-1372. And we want to make sure that you know that there's a better way to keep that money 100% safe where you can't lose the principal and you can't lose any gains. And most importantly, Kevin, that when you pass away, whatever's left in the account will go to your beneficiaries. Ron Grant, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. Have a good weekend. Paid for by Ron Grant, your Safer Money Specialist. All right. Appreciate that. Uh, Appreciate everybody again. 15 years together. Thank you. And, you know, the the beautiful thing about what we have here is that, um, and, and our podcast threats, perhaps, but we have our own podcast. However, there is nothing better in life to me. Maybe you agree with it, maybe you don't. 5805436 then outstanding local talk radio. And I'm not talking about the new style where people don't take calls, which I find annoying, but the style of Mike and Boise, Tea Party Bob, Patriot Ray, Liberal Steve, everybody calling in and collectively coming up with a, even you know even our friend the provocateur pro life. And it gets you through. You know, I don't know if you're a big NASCAR fan. In the old days, before NASCAR went woke, when we had the Rainbow Warrior, before the rainbow was controversial. Do they still have the rainbow flags up, by the way? I guess Pride Month's coming again. It's two two times a year. Uh, Could we have America Month two times a year? Only one day, the 4th of July. Thank you, sweet William. But... You know, they had the Rainbow Warriors, and, and you would listen to Eli Gold and others. And the the spoken word while you're driving, and, it, you know, it, an entire race could last five hours, and it would get you from point A to point B. And whether you're in the yard or you're driving, the people that we met during COVID that continue to listen, maybe they call in, maybe they don't. Beave calling in earlier. If you're driving a truck, whatever, we're there. you're not alone with us. And like I said, podcasts are cool, they're exciting, but they're not live. You don't hear Kevin Miller flub the the Mazda spot like I did. What was that last week where I'm choking and there's no there's no cough button, there's no anything? Bo is sitting there going, oh, this isn't going to be good. I don't know how he's going to get out of this one. That's what makes it real, authentic. And the fact that we can't pronounce the, the vice president's name correctly, and we apologize to her all the time and her followers. That's the flavor that we're trying to continue to keep at this radio station. Think about it. Founded by Boise High School students. I believe the only commercial radio station in the country that was created by kids. And then Bill Boeing. And then the lady that owned Channel 7. And she owned Channel 7 and she owned KIDO Talk Radio. Art Gregory writing a book on it. All those people. Where they used to, and maybe you read about it in your history books, or maybe you watch documentaries that you, you 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 see all these people going into radio studios and the big bands and the orchestras and everything else. That's the heritage, the community service that we honor here. So if you're just tuning in, we did make it to August 23rd, uh, and here you go again, Kevin Miller. Hopefully, we'll see you Monday. That's when they get you. Is right when you celebrate a thing. Uh, congratulations. We're going in a new direction. Really? Yeah. Where's that? Out the door. That was me in Pennsylvania. And I go, please let me stay. No, get out. Regardless, this is all just humor, gallows humor, sarcastic humor, but it's humor. Um, that's what we try to do. We'll talk national issues, local issues. We make friends, we make foes, just like everything else. We honor America. We honor conservatism. And we probably say we're conservative. Uh, look, if the libs want to call in, great. But You're not going to get the run like you do everywhere else. You're not running this place. Coming up next, um, the courage of Donald Trump that a lot of folks have taken for granted. Kevin Miller, phone number's here, 580-5436, 580-K-I-D-O. Where Kent will try to talk about something involving ACHD, and I will go, eh, I don't think so, Kent. Our friend Sin joining us from the Idaho Liberty Dog. Sin, it's been a while. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Kevin? Uh, not bad. So, uh, you know, uh, I was just explaining, oh, dude, you you guys are the bad people, the, all the media and the bad, bad, bad Liberty Dogs, but uh, you're welcome with us. Good morning. 
Good morning. Uh, yeah. Um, well, the reason I was calling you is we're having a Trump rally this Saturday at Ann Morrison Park. Um, we're lining up. Everybody's decking their cars, putting on their Trump flags, putting on their American patriotism. And we're going to cruise the streets of Ada County. And so I wanted to let your followers know that uh, we're going to be meeting up tomorrow at 10 a.m. Well, you know, it's so funny. I was watching something about the president and I go, you know, it's been a while since we've had one of these. When's the last time uh, we've had one that, that you guys have been involved in? Because you're involved with just about everything conservative. Yeah, it's been about, what, four years? Yeah. So it's been a while. It, it is. Uh, so if people want to get involved, what can they do? Um, well, first, they can follow us on Facebook. Um, we post all the events there. We also share other local groups' events on there. Um, and second of all would be to show up tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. at Ann Morrison Park with their cars decked in flags. So it's at 10 a.m. at Ann Morrison Park tomorrow. Um, yes. Let me hit you with something here, uh, young lady, while sure. you're with us. So... You guys get a bad rap from the media. What would you like to say to people that are, are listening right now that they may have seen a published report? You guys get bagged on all the time by the media and the liberals. Uh, what would well, you like to say? It's, you know, the left uses their typical tactics on us. They smear us. They spread lies about us. They slander us. I mean, fear-mongering. First, they call us violent. Um, violent, I guess, in their eyes is that we stand up for what we believe in. Um, we've never been violent to anyone. We've never put hands on anyone. We've never assaulted anyone. On the contrary, uh, the left loves to put their hands on us and assault us, and then they play victim. So we're actually really good people. Uh, many people in our group are, you know, combat veterans, uh, ex-law enforcement officers. We have really good people in our group. And, you know, when you stand up for what you believe in, they call you violent. So that's what I want people to know is that... Uh, we will always stand up for what we believe in. We're not going to back down. And if that makes us violent and extremist, then so be it. We'll embrace the label. We'll send one more time tomorrow for people that would like to show their support to President Trump in, in Idaho. Yes, tomorrow, 10 a.m. and Morrison Park, we're having a Trump 2024 Patriot cruise and flag wave. We'll be leaving the park at 1030 to cruise the streets of Ada County. And we're going to end it with a flag wave somewhere. We'll be releasing the route at the park. And so we, we did one uh, last month. We had a great time. We had over 100 cars participate. And we hope that tomorrow will be even bigger. Sin, thank you. Please uh, keep us informed about what you're doing. And, uh, you know, keep your powder dry. Thank you, Kevin. I want to say thank you so much for always supporting us. And thank you for everything you do. We really appreciate it. We need more more guys like you. Thank you, Sin. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we have it. Sin from the Idaho Liberty Dogs. They're getting ready to have a Trump caravan tomorrow, 10 a.m. at Ann Morrison Park throughout Ada County. If you support the president, show up with your uh, President Trump flags. KIDO Talk Radio, let's get you to work safely and on time. Dave Renner is standing by. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Kevin. From the G&G Installation Studio, traffic now looking pretty good on the freeway. East and westbound things have cleared out nicely after the morning rush. Don't forget Canada Road, uh, Highway 2026 North, where you have construction there. Orange barrels are out. If you have leaks, clogs, or other plumbing issues, perfect plumbing, heating, and air can handle your plumbing needs. Big or small, serving Treasure Valley since 1984. They're trusted for exceptional results. Call or visit callperfectnow.com. That's your traffic now. I'm Dave Burnett on KIDO Talk Radio. Appreciate that, D Dave Burnett. Don't forget as well, we've got the big clay. We've got the buck. 10 to 1 live talk about the issues that matter to you. Followed by Sean Hannity. What will Sean be doing next? Did he make it out of Chicago? We'll find out today at 1. And, of course, Lars Larson will bring you home talking about Northwest issues, Idaho issues, and national issues that matter to you all here on KIDO Talk Radio. Appreciate you joining us. And coming up next, we'll talk to our friend, The Pro. Also, a look back on 15 years of Kevin Miller right here on Idaho's talk station, KIDO Talk Radio, brought to you by Beacon Plumbing. Radio, let's start with our friend, Pro Life, who joins us now. Good morning, Pro. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, you know, uh, I missed Kamala's uh, speech last night, but I 
I watched a lot of the other ones, and uh, this was the baby murder um, convention. You know, they had a, a mobile abortion clinic out in front of the uh, the convention center, and uh, they were giving free vasectomies, free abortions, and uh, and uh, it is really totally outrageous what they're doing, and it's un-American, unnatural, ungodly. Everything is perverse about these people. <clears throat> now, uh, one of the things that uh, I thought was really wrong was Cardinal Kut- Kupchik of uh, of, um, of Chicago. He went and gave a prayer at the, and I watched the prayer. He said nothing about Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Being a Jesuit, he was just uh, all you know humanistic. And it was a humanistic kind of a prayer. I've never really been a fan of the Jesuits, personally. As a no, lifelong Henry. Catholic, I'm not really down with them. No, this Jesuits have never really been fans of Kevin Miller, either, for some reason. Yeah, well, they have the wrong name. They're not Jesuits. They're humanists and, uh, and devilists, I guess you could say. But anyway, um, I'm going to start calling the... Um, Democrat Party, the baby murder and perversion party. Well, I think you've already done that for I don't know how yeah, many well, years. I'm going to really keep doing it. And uh, how well, exciting anyway, for how exciting for the Democrats, <laughs> right? But anyway, thanks for uh, being here for uh, on the August 23rd. I'm I'm thankful it's your birthday. It's the same birthday as my wife, August 23rd, and uh, so. I think I've been with you from the beginning. I can't you have. remember. Good old pro. Yeah. You but were, anyway, you were uh, with me when it wasn't easy to be with me. I always thought it was easy. I couldn't ever figure out what was so hard about it. You just listen and, uh, and maybe call in once in a while. But we don't have enough people call in. I, I meet people out there all the time that say, hey, I hear you on the Kevin Miller show. And I say, well, why don't you call in? And they say, well, I don't know. You know, they have, they're too timid in some way, and they shouldn't be. But anyway, I'm sure glad you came to Idaho, and uh, we hope you stay here for a long time. Well, regardless of, of where I, I'm at, I am in Idaho for the rest of my life, sir. Yeah, well, anyway, the Republicans are making a big mistake. We shouldn't let one more baby die, one more vasectomy happen, one more perversion um, happen, you know. We need to just go head on against the... uh, Well, I mean, if you were were up earlier, we had David Ripley on. Oh, I heard him. Yeah. Yeah, I was up early. I heard him, what he said. He was pretty good. And, uh, but but the Republicans are saying, well, we want to capture some of those people that are pro-choice and and uh, perversion kind of people, they'll see that our economic and our safety and our border situation is better than the Democrats, so they'll vote for us. We shouldn't even uh, try to win an election based on anything but but uh, God and his uh, His ways. If we're going to throw God out the window yes. for, for a moment, it isn't going to work. All right. Uh, God bless you, pro-life. Very quick break, Kevin Miller. Plan to have conversations with Kent, but we've got so many people that want to talk to us. I think, unfortunately, it'll this will have to be an abbreviated one. Kent Goldthorpe, uh, ACHD overlord, joins us now on KIDO Talk Radio. Well, you like them to be abbreviated anyway. Congratulations on your 15th anniversary. Uh, you, you say that with such sincerity, Kent. Oh, you know, when you when you disclosed that the station was started by a bunch of high school kids, it automatically opened my eyes as to why why they would hire you anyway, because you never grew up. Takes well, one to know one. Man, Kent, uh, Kent coming in hard today. I, I really don't know how to react to that. <laughs> Say thank you. Well, I don't think that's a compliment, Kent. I, I I I feel like I choose to be a victim today, and I'm I'm hurt by that. But uh, Kent, uh, when, when did you first hear about this show? Last week? Uh, no, I can't even remember. Uh, it was well before I suckered you into being on the air quality board. I can tell you that. 
Yes, that was uh, a bad call listening to you. Bad call listening to me. Yeah, well, uh, my kids have said that several times, my wife more often than not, but uh, I was glad that you did. Well, I wasn't glad that we did that place. Oh, you you know, your eyes were opened. It was a great experience for you. Now you have an absolute firsthand reason to to hate poorly run government offices. Wow. Well, I suppose. So uh, anything you'd like to share with us? Uh, Again, we had booked you as a a, a big segment, but we've got uh, surprisingly several people that would like to call in. um, But we want to be fair to you. What would you like to say? Uh, I'm sure you were inspired by... I enjoyed uh, you having uh, those three candidates on from District 15. That was wonderful because District 15 has the best chance of any uh, blue district in uh, Ada County of going red again. Yeah, they they seemed um, they seemed well, like they have got a, a big mountain to climb. Though I mean, any Republican in Boise does, right? Eh, I don't know. I don't think so. That's just me me spouting off. Though. When's I, the last I, time a Republican was elected in Boise? Are you kidding? Just a, a I think just a couple of uh, uh, elect elections ago, we had three Republicans in District, District 15 in the recent past. Are they there now? Three at a time. Pardon? Are they still elected? Are they there now? No, not at all. Now they got the boot, but, uh, Kent. Well, let's not have your beloved uh, revisionist uh, fake fake news, fake voting. You're an election uh, denier. Uh, well, okay, if that if that's the kind of election denier I am, I'm proud of it because uh, just a, a little more hard work will turn it red again. If you say so. Okay, enough enough for District 15. But yes, I said so, and and it. That makes it so, I guess. You seem very um, uptight today. Uh, very confident. Like I said, I'm when's the last ready. time a Republican was elected in Boise? You know, we could we could move this show to a lot of other places in the Treasure Valley, but we choose to, to stay here in Boise to, to fight. But, you know, I feel like Bluto and Animal House, who's with me and – I got Bo, I got Sweet William, and, and, and that's about it in Boise. And quite frankly, maybe it's time to write it off. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and change my last name to Belushi if it helps at all. Well, you're there with the, the libs. You like Mayor McLean. I, you know, I heard she was going to take you to lunch for your 15th anniversary, and, I, and now you're turning on me, for goodness sakes. Oh, the, she's I'll, still in I'll, Chicago looking for Joe Biden. Well, he was, was he even there? Uh, he, did he show up for a free vasectomy or what? <laughs> uh, oh, Kent, shoot. Kent, is there anything else you want to say? Uh, quite frankly, I think we should end on that note. Okay, well, I can't say anything professionally or you'll uh, you'll criticize me, but the traffic's running very well this morning. That's not what I, yeah, because no one's on the road. That's true. It's Did Friday. you hear those young ladies from District 15? You know what they said? They said, what does Goldthorpe do? This traffic yeah, around here stinks. Well, you know, I, I try to do things besides just look pretty like you guys. See, everything with Kent is a competition. Have you noticed that? <laughs> well, at least you don't have someone who will lay down and get run over like a you know, by a steamroller like some politicians. What? 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 Here, here's one. What is most likely to happen? Kevin Miller lunch with Lauren McLean or Kevin Miller lunch with Dorothy Moon? That is a really good question. I think we should uh, run a, a poll about that. You know, take a survey and then see what happens. I've got an answer for you, Joe Biden. So? Well, she might be better company for you, Kevin, because, yeah, your blood pressure would be lower. Well, Kent, on that note, have a great day. Okay, you too. See ya. See ya. Find out who's listening today. Let's go to Mark, the watchdog of Eagle, Idaho, with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, Mark. 
Happy anniversary, Kevin, and many, many, many more to you and, and KIDO, and thank them for very much for putting you on air and uh, giving us all out there in the listening audience at KIDO a chance to, to voice our thoughts out there to not only uh, locally here, but even those across the nation who hear you on podcasts. Um, I want to say a few things here. On um, you, you had Raul Labrador on yesterday, and you were talking about Frank Choice voting and about the fraud that could have been uh, done there and, and, and getting that on the ballot. Did you, I don't think you see what I said you a lot of times, uh, and a lot of this comes from the Gateway Pundit because it's not showing up on other websites. Did you know yesterday they carried the story, and I sent it to you, huge victory for Alaska voters. Supreme Court clears path for November vote to repeal ranked choice voting in Alaska. Are you there? Yes. No, I'm listening. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, apparently people don't like it there in Alaska. Well, and now it's on people, the ballot to repeal that. I don't think people like it here. No, no. But it somehow, you know, probably fraudulently because we know the Democrat Party and how they operate. They're like a like a, a federal or a mafia is what they are. Yeah. You know, another thing I saw yesterday was. Did you know in Oregon, taxpayer-funded Oregon group is offering $30,000 home purchase grants exclusively to illegal aliens and non-citizens that exclude Americans. It's called Hacienda. How, how nice. Hacienda Home Ownership Program. Yeah, we had that yesterday. Yeah. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Too here. bad we, we scooped the Gateway Pundit on that one. Victor, ah. Hold on, hold on. I lost the bell. Victory for us. Somewhere. <laughs> um, one last thing. Hold on. Here's you know, the bell. This, you know, oh, find the bell. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Uh, you know, one last thing is something that isn't being talked about enough, and uh, it was mentioned about this national data security breach of our Social Security numbers, hundreds of millions of them. I think this is going to explode into a nightmare for citizens across this country. And yeah, I've already put a credit that. freeze on my credit. Oh, I did too. I did that several and, years and ago. And the fraud wife, alert, you yeah. Know why. yeah. Well, my, my Social Security number was used in somebody filing their tax return. And now I found out, is it, and this is what causes it. This is the type of stuff that... that Every citizen with a Social Security number out there has to go through. I had to go to the banks. I had to go to the insurance companies. I had to go to the sheriff's department. I had to go to the state tax commission, the IRS. You wouldn't believe how much I had to go through before I could get my taxes filed so I could get that thing, uh, you know, turned in. The IRS was supposed to send me, they sent me a letter that they were going to send me a PIN number. Because somebody in another state used my taxpayer ID number, but it wasn't here in Idaho. I found it was through the somewhere in another state outside of Idaho. So they sent me a letter. They were going to send me a PIN number to use with my Social Security number the next year to file taxes. They never did. So I called after waiting hours. I had to get back to the IRS uh, months later as to why they never sent it to me. Well, don't worry about it is all I was told. But this is a huge nightmare complex thing that could affect just millions of the, of the citizens in this country. I agree, Mark. Thank you for the call. Let's go to Lucille, who joins us now with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, Lucille. Good morning, Kevin. I know you have a very busy morning as usual, and there are a lot of people who want to call. So I just want to call and say happy anniversary, Kevin, and... What is it, 15 years? 15 years here, yes. Uh, it'll be 30 wow. total in uh, February, yes. Well, you know what, Kevin? Many, many more. Because we need you. You give everybody a voice. You do so much for the state and even for the country. And so we, sorry if I sound a bit agitated, I'm on the treadmill. And anyway, Kevin, we want to. We, I just want to thank you for everything. Oh, thank you, Lucille. and wish you many, many more years, Kevin. Be careful because we need you, Kevin. 
So happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you, Lucille. Thank you. Re- really appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Always taking the show to the next level. Let's go to Commander in Middleton, then to Captain Harry on KIDO Talk Radio. Hello, old friend. Hello, old friend. Say, I couldn't do this at least without a song, okay? So here goes. Sure. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Kevin Miller. On KIDO. Happy anniversary to you. We're so inspired. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commander. I'll tell you what. Let's just go a little bit further, too. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans. White with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. Good morning to you. God bless you. May it be another 15 years. God bless you, Commander. Take care. Absolutely, Kevin. Thank you. Appreciate that. Commander, tearing up a little. Captain Harry with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, Captain, my captain. Top of the morning. Happy anniversary. Boy, that's a hard one to follow, that last caller. He's a hell of a singer. Yes, sir. We are very glad to have you, Kevin. Thank you very much. You are the right man for the job at the right time that we need you. Thank you so much. I hope you have another 15 at least. And uh, I did want to throw out a little comment on the DNC last night. Sure. I decided instead of a chameleon, I'm going to, I would go for her sister. Way better speaker, way better looking, way smarter, way better stage presence. Man, she was chameleon. She had a bad time starting out on that deal. She could have said thank you 31 times and stepped on her own welcome mat. And uh, her sister should have the job. I, I, I think I'll, if I was a dumb Democrat commie, I'd uh, go with her over over Camellia. So anyway, happy anniversary, Kevin. Thank you much. I'll be standing by. Thank you, Captain Harry. God bless. All right. Tea Party Bob joins us now with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. We're a little worried about you. We haven't heard from you in a while. <laughs> You got to be able to get through on the phones if you want to hear from me. <laughs> Ooh, okay. It wasn't exactly easy this morning. Let's put it that way, Kevin. I dialed in about fifteen times. <clears throat> anyway, are you there? Yes, we're here. Just listening. I, I want to wish you a happy anniversary first. Well, thank and you. I want to uh... thank you for having those three ladies running for office in District Fifteen on your show this morning. You know, it's such a breath of fresh air to see how they understand that we have so much complacency with registered Republicans voting and are willing that they're willing to put their lives on hold to serve the people of this district. Now, 15 has been a swing district for, for uh, Republicans, I would guess, probably for the last 10 years. So it's nice to see some changes taking place and somebody actually taking some interest. Uh, Idaho and seem to have the opinion that we are a red state and nothing could be further from the truth. You know, I think we can agree that the progressives have a strong foothold in Boise and Meridian now, and I don't think they're going to stop there. We have seen how they have targeted the densest population, populations uh, in the Treasure Valley, and they've, they have started their progressive creep. And I assure you, the next place they're going to go to is going to be Napa. They're going to turn this place into another Portland, Seattle, or San Francisco, and it doesn't take long. Uh, You know, Kevin, I I have been screaming as loud as I can for years that our state has been under siege by a corporate establishment elite. They have been the sponsors of many of the progressive elected officials 
for over a decade. Idaho has been like a proverbial frog who is put into a pot of water and is comfortable till the heat is turned up to a point where he finally sees the light, but it's too late. The water begins to boil and the frog becomes dinner. We are going to become dinner if we don't change. This is what I have has been happening in the Treasure Valley as they continue to elect representatives to our legislature simply because they have an R in front of their name. Problem is that many of these candidates are pre- pretend Republicans who are bought and paid for by the elitists to do their bidding. You know, the fit hit the shan when, so to speak, the Idaho GOP convention turned into a conservative party. I mean, a real conservative party. And let's just hope we can keep the status quo because this ranked choice of voting is the way the left uses this vehicle to change a state from red to blue in a matter of a few years. And we've seen it happen in many places. Look what's going on in Alaska. Look what happened in Colorado. You know, this change is being supported by a lot of dark money coming in from out of state. And if you want to see the state turn blue, just allow ranked choice voting to be implemented here. When you see the state is taking over 40 percent of their budget from the federal government, you know that your state is under tremendous pressure from the feds to do what they want when they want. And that's what we've been doing all along here. Okay. Anyway. Thank you very much for your show, my friend, and thank you for your 15 years of dedication to, the, to this this state and to the people in it. Couldn't have done it without you, old friend. Thank you, my friend, and have a great day. Have a great day, our friend Tea Party Bob. The yin to our yang. Liberal Steve joins us now with Kevin Miller celebrating 15 years here on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning. Has it been 15 years already? 15 years today. Who would have thought? Oh, my God. When you're just having a blast, time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> you could say. Well, I tell you, couldn't have been a better person for that radio station. because You took it over and you took care and you made things happen. Well, you remember the station without me, I do recall. Uh, not really. Well, well, I remember a couple people down there. Yeah, but I mean, you've yeah, been uh, you've yeah. been on Boise Radio for years. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a talk show caller. By God, I have to go after the Tea Party Bobs and the Right to Lifers and the Lazy Lucys and uh, oh, you know boy. everybody out let, there. Let, let, let's let's keep it positive today. Oh come on now. We are we are the world, Kevin. We are the answer. We are the future. When we fight, we win. And we don't go back. What to Trump Laura? Trump is so oh. far under under the wire right now. Oh God, down here people are just laugh and people are riding around. <laughs> Trump oh. Trump must have somebody come over every five minutes and wipe the sweat off his forehead. Jesus. He's down here trying to save things, and it ain't going to happen. Arizona's lost it. We're blue now, baby. Liberal Steve is here, and we are blue, 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 blue. Well, very much like oh, uh, going to be great. Much like the Hymns products, blue, blue, blue. Thank you uh, for the call. Anything else you'd like to share with us? No, you just stay fired up and keep making it happen. And when I get down there this year in November. We'll sneak up on you and give you a big hug. Uh, thank you. I remember when you dressed up as Santa one year. It was uh, very disturbing. Thank you. <laughs> love you, Cap. We, we, we love you, Liberal Steve. Uh, more coming up. Don't forget our friends at Beacon Plumbing. Stop freaking call Beacon today. 15 years in Idaho. Lee Joe joins us now on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning. Hey, good morning, sir. I hope we got some sound quality. I'm driving semi today. Um, so first off, happy anniversary. When you first started, I was uh, repairing sewer lines and spent most of my time in the ditch. So I didn't get much chance to listen to the Kevin Miller. So I appreciate you sticking it out for 15 years, despite the uh, numerous double secret probations you've been put on 
Um, we don't get to hear enough about. I'm, I'm sure that's company policy or something, but I appreciate you sticking it out out here and giving us a voice, especially through the pandemic. Um, to uh, those uh, three fine ladies you got on from District 15, I, until three weeks ago, I was the Senate candidate for District 16 and uh, decided I do not have the time to do that properly and someone else wanted to start running. So I asked the uh, court once again, uh, rather than running a uh, third time. And the, and the reason I run is so that District 15 doesn't get as much money uh, I mean, doesn't get as much Democrat money thrown at it from District 16. District 16 are Democrat, and we, we got to do our best to make a team effort and get 15 uh, reelected. Or well, Cody Galloway reelected, despite the fact that she uh, she lost to a uh, slight vote split with the Constitution Party last night. She is an excellent, excellent legislator. Um, the DNC, this convention, their whole narrative of the January 6th was a coup. It was all Trump's fault. You know, I, I, I can't stand that anymore. I, I've listened to their lives for so long. That narrative of what I would call actually mostly a peaceful protest, which had multiple BLM folks, etc., inciting the rioters, it's uh, it's amazing to me that we they're still trying to hang everything on January 6th. They're just incapable of running on uh, their record. And this January 6th thing was a setup. It, you know, this the whole idea that it was this great grand coup. It was just some folks protesting that got a little out of hand. No, no houses were burned down. No police stations were burned down. But that's the coup that the media wants to point to and say, "Oh, this is lawlessness." And uh, you know, and then the way they've gone after people like, uh, uh, you know, like our friends from People's Rights, you know, and putting them in prison for extremely long terms compared to what they actually did. It's it's ridiculous. But uh, I appreciate you. I, I appreciate being able to say something about that on this stage. So, thank nice you, Lee. Case, Kevin Miller. Thank you, Lee Joe. Appreciate you, brother. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Let's go to Kathy from South Carolina, who joins us now on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning. Good morning, Kevin. I'm just like a lot of the other callers. Wanted to call and wish you happy anniversary and. Thank you so much for everything that you do. We can't be complacent and not and and to think that we are we can't take you for granted. We can't do that. So every day that you're on the air, it's a blessing. So that's all I wanted to say today and have a great weekend. Thank you, Kathy. Uh have a Bojangles biscuit for me. Yeah, I will. I'm still figuring out how to get those to you. You never know. <laughs> okay. If I fly home to see my daughter, I'll bring some. Uh, that and, and the tailgate special. That would be quite a, an adventure. <laughs> yeah, it would. Well, thank you again for everything, and God bless you, Kevin. God, God bless you, Kathy. Take care now. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye. Okay, more coming up next. Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. Don't forget Lars Larson this afternoon at 4. KI congrats uh, from Denver as well. Thank you very much. From the App Yappers, do appreciate that. Concerned, watch Camilla. We'll thank the people for nominating her when, in fact, the people had nothing to do with her. Useful idiots. Thank you very much. Let's go to Eric in Idaho with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Kevin. Congratulations on your long years of service to the Treasure Valley and hope you get 15 more. <laughs> My creditors hope so, too, sir. So thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to say I was born and raised here. I left in 99, joined the military and left. I'm uh, 50 years old now. And I just got to say that, you know, yes, Idaho's getting more blue. And to be quite honest, um, there's really no other argument to be made. The, the line has been drawn. The, the, the people that are on one side, like that gleeful, savagely gleeful liberal that was on there 
laughing it up about how the state was turning blue. You're not ever going to convince that person that the Constitution matters, that uh, dead babies are not a virtue. Th- those arguments are lost on those people. We need to start with one, with security of, of elections to make sure they're not ballot harvesting. And ultimately, we need to start with the kids, and we need to do a better job with young people to show that America is not some demonic entity, but uh, we are the last hope for freedom on this planet. And, uh, you know, anybody over the age of 25, I'm sorry, if if they're on one side, they're they're probably lost. There's nobody sitting at home still deciding on whether or not they're going to pick Kamala or or Trump. Um, It it just doesn't happen. They, They already know. I agree, and thank you for your service, brother. All right. Gosh, I wish I, I wish it was still the '90s in Idaho. It was a great place to live, and uh, that we we can turn it back. But we have to invest in, in the young people, and and show them that uh, ultimately what it comes down to is the Constitution allows us to continue to have civilization. And um, if if they want to go to the side of anarchy, then you know, train your eyes to somebody else that'll listen. Eric, thank you. You take care, sir. All right, you too. Bye. Appreciate that. I, I like that. Let's go back to the 90s. Dr. Livingston joins us now with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, sir. Hi, Kevin. I have nothing more to say than what what your listeners and callers have already said, except uh, to reiterate congratulations on 15 years, and thank you for being here. You were a voice for for so many of us who I think are – our political and religious philosophies in this state are still aligned with traditional values and and but but you give us a voice uh, in the in the secular world to to express our feelings uh, a voice that is oftentimes squelched uh, in other parts of of uh, society uh, even even going down to the uh, the legislature talking about these values and our principles are kind of thought to be uh, 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 different, and 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 we're kind of our voice isn't allowed to be heard. But I, having having you here in this town, the other thing that that is unique about you, and is also about Rush Limbaugh, is you look at what you do as a vocation, and it's not a job, and your passion comes out because of that. And um, continue allowing this to be a vocation. I know there are a lot of stressors uh, in the uh, broadcasting world that 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 we aren't cognizant of. But but the way you approach your job uh, and the integrity that you have uh, is because of your sense of vocation, and that's one of the things in this community that I'm very grateful for. So thank you very much. Uh, God bless you, Doctor Livingston, and. Um I think the Ducks are going to get your Buckeyes this year. <laughs> hey, the Buckeyes, I'll, I'll tell you, if you want to see a right. a tough schedule, look at Michigan's. Michigan's got playing five teams, all of which could end up being in the top 12. Uh, I think Ohio State has a good road to the national championship game. Uh, they got to beat uh, Oregon, Michigan, and Penn State. But Mich- add to that, Michigan's got to beat... Uh, has also got to beat uh, Texas early on in the season, so that's going to be tough. We appreciate you, sir. We'll uh, stay tuned. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, our great friend, Dr. Livingston. Joining us now, um, the gentleman who uh, our great friend Sweet William is based on, his name is John Mounts, uh, a gentleman that uh, has known me for many, many years. Um, my third job in broadcasting was working with John, and I was very blessed to be able to... Uh, well, to lobby for John to get a full-time job, and he's surpassed me so far in radio and everything else. And, you know, just like everything in broadcasting, I can remember hiring John and then uh, being threatened with being fired for hiring John uh, from our old friend, uh, Double J. So, once again, 15 years in Idaho. Uh, Hopefully in February it'll be 30 years altogether. Welcome, John Mounts. Good to be here, Kevin. You know, I remember... I don't know if you remember the conversation that you and I had. We were sitting in the uh, control room of the old Magic 96, and you actually said to me, you said, where do you see yourself in in 10 years? And I said, I don't know, here producing this morning show? And you said, no, you're going to be a program director. And you were right. 
Uh, I don't if, know if you remember that conversation. If I, well, I do now. Um, but I will say this, that I tell this to everyone. I've told this to you. If my life depended on it, um, I would have you programming and producing. And heck, now you're a host. But, um, you know, uh, the magic of radio. We've had so many adventures together, and then you've moved on to work with other people. And they always comment on how great it is to, to work with you. But the magic of radio in this ever-competitive world, do you have any maybe even embarrassing, funny Kevin Miller stories you'd share with us? <laughs> <laughs> do I ever? Yes, um, you do. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of, of, of one of my more, more favorite Kevin Miller stories. Um, were they, are these on-air stories or off-air stories? Uh, well, as long as we can say them off the air. I have a couple where I'm, uh, you know, and, and the talent, at any level, they, they, thankfully, I, I'm caged here, so I'm very much, uh, on a leash. But the talent, once they continue to get success, they kind of lose their minds. And, you know, you're calling in to the producer and going, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. And one of my favorites is I'm on the phone with you and I slip and fall and wipe out on my way into work. And I'm covered in mud and going, um, you know, play Triple H or something of that nature or, when I was trying to do severe weather coverage in my little Mustang and I hit a piece of ice live on the air and go, ooh. You swan out on the bridge live on the air. You were on 280. I remember that. Yeah. I mean, when you look back at the dopey things some of us do, uh, I, I hope that we rival some of the great ones. Uh, I always like to talk about uh, our our shortened career in Nashville where we had the guy on who was stuck on the toilet. We called him Mr. Stinky. and. <laughs> He goes, no, Mr. Stinky. And I go, no, Stinky. And his wife's yelling at him going, get off the phone. They're making fun of you. And it was, uh, it was a magic moment that you don't really find those in radio anymore. And then you, and you had your producer. No, it wasn't, even, I think she was a news person who was on the, was on the phone with her trying to convince Mr. Stinky to come back on and he refused to come back on and she was just trying to badger him into coming back on the show. Yes, that was, mm. that was another great highlight, uh, moment for for the you know what's you know i think about it so often is we don't have a good reel of old comment you know because when it happens you know we we say that was great radio and then we move on and we don't save the stuff a lot of times no and i, I mean her name was sugar and she died so god rest her soul but uh you know the the idea and i always tell people this and to hear what we have here in idaho is long as it lasts and i always say that as the disclaimer but what we have here is a show that you know, you and I dreamed up of, and I was telling my parents this because they're big Daily Wire people, and I go, you and I were on the vibe of Nashville 20 years ago, and we had a plan for this show to go big time out of Nashville. We had all the resources. It wasn't meant to be, and we're all where God has intended us to be, but uh, can you expand on how you and I had this concept of being nationally syndicated and how that was going to roll? Well, the idea was is to create a program that could be wor that could work in any city, but at the same time was localized to fit every city. So you were able to interject big name guests that you're able to get because you're on a national platform, and at the same time have places to insert local content where maybe one day you do interview the mayor of a small one of your small affiliates, and they insert it on their station, and at the same time a station you know 500 miles away they're running a mayor exact same interview, but with you with a different mayor, and that way you're able to sound local. And and national all at the same time. You have best of both worlds. Yeah, and it was uh, it was wild, and uh, uh, you know it was so funny. Uh, and I think we can tell the story that you knew that I was on the hot seat and I was going to get it, but you remained hopeful that I wasn't going to be fired in Nashville, and that put a strain on our friendship because I'm looking at you going, "What do you mean I'm going to get the boot?" Well, you know, if you just do this, and we drew 800 people to a. A thing at Dave Ramsey's church, and the next day the blue man got me. What was that like for you? What was that vibe? Because you and I, you'd worked to get to Nashville for about five years. I'd worked to get there for nine years. What was that like? You know, the frustrating thing is a lot of times you're in a position, and I don't know if this, this transcends the radio business to other businesses, I imagine it does, where you know something, you know something. So you've been brought into the inner circle of, hey, this is going to happen today, just so you know, we're going to have to let so-and-so go. And you're like, well, so-and-so is my friend. I, I don't know that I, I wish you hadn't told me. <laughs> well, I've told you, but you can't tell them yet. So all you can kind of do is sort of, you know, wink and nod. And a lot of times you say, somebody's trying to tell you something's going to go down, and you say, I don't want to know what's going to go down. And it, 
it's a situation of go ahead and send Kevin in for the morning meeting. And I said, uh, okay, <laughs> hey Kevin, uh, he's waiting for you around the corner, and, and you're and, and you're like, so everything all good? Yeah, it's it's gonna be good. Yeah, he's just gonna talk to you about some. Thing. Right, and uh, I'm, I I didn't know if I, if I just said no, run. Our our, our old friend who said uh, you getting fired was he's the never first lost one. Right, he's never lost one. I go, well, you sure picked the time for it. And then, you know, this is how goofy radio is, and, and we say this because it's not inside. It's maybe you have your own type of idiosyncrasies in your business, but uh, we won't mention their names. But there was a, a, a people that were so paranoid about being fired, and they were so right to be fired that they took off of the building. So. The people in charge. Well, take 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 the story away from there. <laughs> so it was it was a uh, it was a talent on air talent, and I think he knew what was coming. So this was in Nashville. He uh, he had a boat on the lake, and so he left the building. He was supposed to have a meeting that morning where they were going to let him go, and he knew it was coming. So he got in his boat. He, he took off on his boat out into the lake, and they followed him. So happens that, that one of the people in the building also had a boat on the same lake, so they followed him out onto the lake to, 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 to where his boat was out there in the middle of the lake to fire him from there on the lake from one boat to another boat. Yeah, that that is commitment to termination. Um, you know, that was, that was tough when it ended, uh, for me in Birmingham for you and for me. That was, we had just, we had rolled. We had done the September 11th where we were the first local show before Glenn Beck and anybody else that went to ground zero. That was a, that was a tough one. It, you know, it was, and it was another one of those situations where I was given the choice of, you know, He's leaving, you, you know, and, I was, and I said, and they said, we, we'd like to have you stay on. And I thought, well, all right, I mean, I, I'm loyal and all, but at the same time, I, I do need a paycheck. So I guess I want to stay on. <laughs> but I hated that because it was, you know, it was it was no fun at all. And, you know, through our careers, we kind of danced around one another. You know, you go here and then I go there and then, I, and then you come in here where I am and I go there where you are, you know, that kind of thing. So we spend a lot of time back and forth like that throughout throughout the years and it's been it's been a fun ride and it's it's not over yet you know we're still we're still very much on the ride well i don't know if we're on the rise anymore but we are on the ride and um you know again i tried to bring you to raleigh and, and you were smart enough not to go there but uh you know a, a couple of things as somebody who has observed me from across the country what would you and again you're you you're smart enough to be objective what would you say about the whole ride you know you have this ability to connect to people in a way that a lot of talk show hosts, they talk at you, and you really talk with your listener. And it's it's a conversation. I hear it so often. One of the things that's so interesting about your style, and I don't hear this with anyone else, is at the end of the conversation, a lot of times you don't get the last word. In fact, the person says their last word, and then you don't say anything, and it, it causes them to have to come back and keep talking because you're get, you're kind of letting them you're letting them have the room out there to run. And I think they're able to speak their mind not just to you but to the listener. And I think that's a that's a very unique trait that I've not seen in any other talk show. For everyone else, it's my show. It's my show. These are my topics and my my opinion. No, with you, it really is your listener's show. It's it's the audience's show. And you're just kind of like the guy in the middle, you know, and now here's so-and-so. You're like the ringleader. And you just bring them on and bring yeah. them off. And that's all you do. And, and I think that's a great talent, a great trait. You bring out the best in the people you interview, but you do it in a non-directional way so that the show really can grow organically. Well, and, and you know, you and I, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Paul Feinbaum and Pat Smith, and that's something I, I really admired about them. And, uh, of course, I think Paul always gets the last word. I have to hit you with this one. Um, out of all the things that I've done, both in Idaho, going to Iraq a couple times, uh, to Ground Zero, Queasy, uh, is Queasy still the number one thing that I – that, that when, when I was there with the – 200 black people and i was the guy debating the n-word in, in baltimore is that the still number one on your chart you know it's hard to say it, it, is, it is definitely it is definitely up there for me no ground zero is is far and away it's still the biggest the biggest thing we ever did together but uh queasy was fun <laughs> yeah not gonna lie. but you think about that and, and we're running out but um you know that's the power of local radio that you champion today that we try to emulate as well john mounts our uh our hero, thank you for indulging us today. We really appreciate you, brother. 
Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for the opportunity. All right. Our great friend, John Mounts. And don't forget, Clay and Buck coming up next. I do want to thank you all for a great run. Don't read anything into this. Just saying, hey, man, thank you. Life is so short. We don't acknowledge the people that are difference makers. And you make a difference every day. God bless. Please keep the faith. And remember, Kevin Miller loves you. Have a great day.